What is up, guys, and welcome to the Vision Wood Podcast, episode number 37. What is up, beautiful, elegant, wooden potatoes? How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you very much. Very well. Unlike many podcasts, today I am not, like, super tired and, not, you know, on my last legs. I woke up at a normal time, 9 o'clock in the morning, and uh, it's all very good. What about you? Oh, wow. Well, I didn't get any sleep last night because I was out late because i missed like, the, i missed I, I missed i missed the first movie all right so we had we had a 3d captain america at 9 45 we just missed the train don't you know when you you walk down those steps and you that train is right there and it just drives right off and you're like wait wow. you had to get your train to watch the movie yeah yeah i had to take the marta which is our pub, public transportation here right which is okay. garbage and garbage if you guys ever come to georgia Transportation's here. It's garbage. Garbage. When are you trying to convince Total Biscuit to come live there? Oh, oh, no. Total Biscuit is lots of good <laughs> chicken and waffles here. They serve that on the, the trains. Best. Oh, yeah. Yes, they do. They do. Do they have trains where they have little trolleys that run along for you? Um, We're getting one, actually, in the city. Really? Mm-hmm. See, for me, cross-country trains are like really good because they'll constantly have like this little old lady with a tea trolley she walks along and she's like would you like oh, anything dear and you can buy like a pack of Maltesers get a cup of coffee oh you mean like, like a, a legit train oh Boom, yeah a train yeah oh I thought you meant like one of those old are they called trolleys aren't they called trolleys those little yeah, things it's like that a you trolley. jump on you can just would jump you... on real quick don't tell me wow. you got like an old lady just, just on a trolley, just handing you tea. And oh, biscuits. you're thinking of like shopping trolleys? No, no, it's not a no, shopping no, no, trolley. No, no, it's not no, like no, a no, bomb no. in the I, middle of the train. No, I mean like <laughs> something that they. It's like they put the tracks within the road, and it's like a mini train that That's goes a around monorail. The city. A mono monorail. Yeah, isn't that a monorail? Wow, okay. No, no you're thinking of a tram. You're thinking of a tram. Yes, I know what you're talking about. And no, I'm not talking about okay. a tram. Okay. I'm talking okay. about a little food cart that someone wheels up the aisle in a train. Oh. Uh, you're talking the about seats. a food cart? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Do you have those? This was the question. No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. There, there is... There is there is a homeless men on these on these trains, man, smelling like all types of things, all kinds of things. Do you have you ever given a homeless person money? Yes. Um, also, I've also seen them drive away in a sports car. So conflict of interest. Wait, what? Really? Uh, oh yeah, dude. Come on, you. Know, some of these, not all of these homeless guys are homeless? true. <laughs> yeah, are homeless. Uh, man, let me tell you. Here in in Atlanta, everywhere, everywhere, you cannot go outside of your house without getting stopped at least twice. And I'm not joking. People who have been here know. Can't they get housing? Can't they get benefits and housing? No, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think they have a a program there for all of them. There's just too many. There's no way they'll put housing for all of them. Um, There's also, you mean like a homeless shelter? Anything, yeah. Yeah, there's a homeless shelter. I think it might have shut down. But sh- um, shouldn't there be government institutions to, you know, subsidize those without jobs? Well, he, this is them... the U.S. This is the U.S., man. And, and I thought the, the U.S. UK. was the land of the free and opportunity, not of Whoa, and... who told you that lie? Wow. Who told you that <laughs> What was worse for this, where you currently are or Miami? Oh, for, for, for homeless people coming up to you? Oh my! But, um, Georgia was is way worse. Like I've never seen it this bad before. I mean, really? I feel sad for them. Yeah, I, yeah. It's it's why really is- really bad. I I have no idea why. No idea. I wouldn't have been living here for five years. <laughs> Do you ever wonder if you could end up homeless one day? I I have been homeless before. What really? Yeah, but we, in Miami you had like. This is way back, way oh, back. Oh, story time. I'm oh, my boop-boop. gosh. <laughs> no one wants to hear this crap. All right. No, no, no they do. They, I do. Well, all right, all right, all right, all right. So we always get too, I always get too personal on this damn podcast. On okay. a warm summer mo- evening of 1998. On a warm summer evening on 1990, I don't know, 2000. It was actually the <laughs> <laughs> 1989 when I was born. Um, No, I... 
uh, basically, I had a rough childhood. Um, stepdad was a douchebag. Let's leave it as okay. that. And my mom wanted to leave. So we left not having anywhere to go. Right? So we left and we slept in a car for about a couple of days and we found a homeless shelter in downtown Miami. But this wasn't like a homeless shelter, like, you know, everyone in the same room. Like this had, depending on your, I guess your income and stuff like that, you can, you're able to actually hold up into one of these little, I guess, extremely small rooms with a bathroom. Is extremely small with bunk right. bags, right? So we <laughs> with what with what bunk bag bunk bunk bags. Oh, I thought you said butt bags. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so that so we stayed there for a couple of years until we were able to just kind of you know you were there a, a couple of years. I hold on, was it a couple of years or was it a? It might have been like a year and a half, a year and a half. How old were you during all this? I just graduated high school. Um, oh, okay. I just graduated high school, was going to college, um, and and had to get a job. So I yeah, I had to I had to stop college. It was it was a rough patch. It was a rough patch. Dude, that's messed up. I never knew any of this. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Podcast brings out the evil. <laughs> I, I, I was I was picturing you as like a little kid during him. I was going to say, oh, what did you do for school? But you were actually older than I thought you were. So this kind of been too long. I guess it maybe it was a while ago now for you. Yeah. How did you get out of that situation? Um, between me having a job, I I I got a job as an IT, and this is when I said I used to work IT. Yep, this is where I got the job. Um, a guy liked me, and okay. when he like he came over to like he like supports like the place. And he's like, oh, hey, and you, you're good at IT and blah, blah, blah. So I worked there for a while until I moved to, till I got married. Wow, okay. And I moved to Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, man. Jeez. So, so there you go. Yeah, and it's, my, my, my mom always had a job. Uh, at least she, I can't remember if she didn't have a job there, but I, th- I think she did have a job. She still have her um, how, how is she doing now? Job. Is this gonna have like oh, a really sad ending? No, 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 no. She's fine now. She's totally fine now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. she's a director of like many preschools. It's pretty crazy. Oh yeah, no, I remember you telling me that. Yeah, I yeah, know yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Anyways, there you go. Story time. That's a happy ending. Oh, we almost like had a dark intro to the podcast. <laughs> almost. Oh, really? <laughs> Not yeah. dark at all. Oh, it's no, always no. a happy ending. This is a happy ending. This is that movie we were talking about about the homeless guy that gets out and you know <laughs> gets a career on YouTube. So that's, I suggested that's a couple movies, but I'm scared to even watch anything. <laughs> yeah, right. I saw those. I was so happy to see that it was a movie, at least one movie that was similar. Yeah, yeah, similar for people to know. I I also wanted to thank you guys. We we never mentioned this, but uh, thank you guys for. Whoever went to iTunes and actually reviewed the podcast, you got a lot of you guys gave us five stars. One guy gave us three stars, but gave us a really good review. I don't know what was going on there. Maybe it was a misclick. Uh, but, okay, but yeah, there you go. All you guys, I've I read your names out loud in my in my home. And wait, 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 wait. Can I go read these right now? Um, <laughs> you you'll be fast. There's like twenty one of them. Yeah. Okay. Oh, were there any really good ones? Uh, oh, well, yeah, yeah, there are good ones. It's, it's going to take too long to read 21. Well, you don't have to read 21. We could just pick one at random. That'd be so fun. See, and this could be, this is how you encourage people to review it, dude. They might get on the, the podcast. But, uh, but now that you said it, it becomes real. And now they're Yeah, like... and they'll review it more, won't they? <laughs> Do they review individual podcasts or the whole thing? I'm on the page and I can't see how to get to reviews. Um, it, you, you have to open up. You, the only way to see reviews, you have to open up your, like your actual program. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh God, I don't have iTunes installed. Screw that. Yeah. <laughs> wow, easily. Oh, uh, wow. there you go. There you go. Well, Whoa. maybe for next time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He'll install iTunes. Movie it's club. A good review. So I watched Tombstone, and you watched Office Space. Yeah, all right, so uh, just let's quickly recap so that people know we're doing this is a thing now, yeah? We need, like, a jingle. Do you want a jingle? Um, uh, sh- sure. Okay. Uh, well, we have no physical instrument, um, so just for now, welcome to the Visual Word Podcast Movie Review. 
movie review. Oh yeah. no! Oh, movie club, movie, movie club? club. Yeah, let, let's let's movie let's, club. Let's not dive into the, the reviews. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so basically the idea here is each podcast, Matt gives me a movie, I give Matt a movie. You guys watch both the movies, do double the effort, and then we will discuss it all on the next week. Yeah. So. So. The, so I, I want to hear what you thought of Tombstone first. Did you watch Tombstone? Did you finish it? No, I I, <laughs> I was going to, but then I didn't. So. Well, hold on. What what turned you off from the from the movie? Um. Slow beginning or something. Yeah, I turned off really quickly. Like, they got off a train, and then they were at a place, and I just, I was like, oh, I'm not done for it today. Oh it gosh. really wasn't anything to do with the movie itself. It was just on that particular day, I had got it, and then I wasn't really interested in pursuing it much further. I might watch how, it after you, we record How this. could you not like some some Kurt Russell? How could you not like that 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 straight up beautiful man with the with the, with the the eyes? I'll right. let you this in on a secret. Gray. Yeah. A, a secret about me. I don't know much, if anything, about celebrities. There are very few celebrity names I know. Sometimes we're like, oh, hey, I've seen that guy in something before, but I don't pay attention to it. I really don't. So I have no idea who that is, and I well, probably wouldn't have any idea for many <laughs> people. Right, what about Terry Quinn? He was uh, John Locke in Lost. He was also in there. He's in it? Really now? Yes. Uh, Michael Rooker, he's in it. Uh, he's the guy from with the hook in hook? Uh, uh, The Walking Dead. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. All right, right. right. We got Billy Bob Thornton as well. I <laughs> got slapped. <laughs> but yeah, dude. Like uh, B- Billy. These Bob- are people I recognize. Okay. Yeah, man. This is quite quite a bit quite, quite a bit going on in there. Quite a bit going on in there. Um. So what I'm, is the story? What's what 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 is the right, so It's a western, right? Yeah, it's a western. So these brothers, they they give up being lawmen and they move to Tombstone, Arizona, to be to, to get rich, basically. And make money. And because they, they wanted to give up the whole, you know, saving people's lives thing. And as he goes and travels to Tombstone, people are like, oh, please be our sheriff. Please be our sheriff. He's like, no, 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 no. It's because it was like a done deal. Like he doesn't want to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. But you could see that it runs in their veins, you know? Right. Okay. So they move to Tombstone. But little did they know that there's a problem in Tombstone as well with this big bandit group called the Cowboys that was it's kind of running the city. Right. So it gets involved that way. I don't want to spoil too much, but man, 20 minutes in, there's this scene that I must say is probably one of the <laughs> craziest things. Like this guy is causing problems inside of – uh, this establishment, right? And this is how he gets his first job to to make more money because he, um, you know, there's you know there's there's a lot of entrepreneurship going on in the town. So well, when he, you say they go to Tombstone to make money, did they have any idea of a business in mind or what? Uh, yeah. Is this Gold Rush or what? D- this is like, it's a place where you can start up a business, and there's a lot of people to to capitalize on yeah okay yeah more capitalize on um it's uh and also you make money off the cowboys which which is which is also pretty good but there's this conceit casino that he walks into i guess an odin casino and this guy's just like causing trouble and messing up the business basically um turning customers away because he's loud he's obnoxious he's always um you know slapping people around and Kurt Russell just walks up to this guy and he's like, you're in my seat. And the guy is like, is that right? And his name is Wyatt, Wyatt Earp. And he's like, is that right? He's like, yeah, that's right. And then, dude, he just manhandles this guy. He even, he slaps this guy literally like three times, grabs his (laughs) ear and throws him out of the casino. It was ridiculous. Oh my gosh. It was it was so ba man. It was so awesome. You're <laughs> telling like, me one of your favorite scenes is just a guy getting bitch slapped out of the yes, bar. Yes, yes, yes. And it was it was great. It was great. It was just great. But yeah, there's a lot of good scenes. There's also some scenes that are kind of like okay, yeah, this this is an old movie. You kind of re- you kind of recognize it, you know. Um, and you know some audio problems here and there, but that's that's just comes with an this, old. This came old out in movie. 1993, right? Yeah. Um, Interesting. It, overall, I'm not gonna spend too long on it. I'm not gonna spoil too much. Uh, overall, I I I love some of the characters like Doc, 
Doc was a really cool character. Um, and um, it was really, it was actually a little bit emotional at the end for the people who have watched throughout the whole thing. I thought the end was a little emotional. Like I, 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 I enjoyed this character this whole time and just to see, you know, how it ends, it's really like, wow, you know? Um, all right, so I'm going to pick something here. You said for people who watch all the way through to the end. You watch these movies with your wife, right? Does this mean she didn't watch all the way to the end? Oh, oh no, 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 no. She she didn't watch it with me. She was busy. Oh, okay. So, all yeah, right, yeah. Right. So I watched it by myself. She watched, She caught some of it, but not all this, of it. It, sound, it looked to me like maybe the kind of movie people might fall asleep during. Just throwing out. No, I, I, don't th- I didn't fall asleep at all. I thought I was really engaged. Um, I mean, I... I thought it was a really cool movie. I thought it was a really cool movie. I I would say it's a good watch. I would I would definitely say it's a good watch. It starts off so brutal, dude. So brutal. Oh my I gosh. I think one of the reasons I was going to watch it was I did see a scene from it um that looked fantastic. Just like there was a lot of tension between the characters. I can barely remember what they were talking about now. Um but it got me really into the idea of watching it and then I was very bored very quickly while I was doing it. But I will go back to it cuz I don't think I give it its fair due. Um, I all right. I'm gonna recommend an anime to you that I I've, uh, I've watched okay. half of it, but I need to finish it. All right. So what I recommend to you and what you guys can watch at home is Redline. It's an anime. Redline is this a movie? A okay. movie. Yeah. It's don't worry. I'm not gonna give you a long series. It's just, it's just a movie, and it's really ooh. It's you got a synopsis art style, for me. The art style is ridiculous so don't you know when i say anime turns everything awesome you know it could turn tennis awesome with prince of tennis it could turn basketball awesome it could turn anything pretty much awesome this is racing but it's times 2000 and you feel the adrenaline rush through you like you're like oh my gosh this is really good okay all right all so right. watch it watch it and i i need to finish watching it as well so i'll be able to talk about it um um, I also watched Captain America. I'm I'm just gonna say it's good. Okay, it's it's good. The action. Uh, Winter Soldier is this? Yes, it it's good. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say. It's it's amazing. The fighting is on point, and I love. I'm a sucker for good cinematography when it comes down to just fighting. Just, oof, oof, See, oof. And when I watched Scarlett Captain- Johansson is in it, so that's also a good one. When I watched captain america when it first came out it was one of the biggest moments for me where i was like god damn i'm maybe a little bit bored of superhero movies it's the same thing every time mm. and i'm kind of concerned that, that like i've not even considered the sequel just because i'm sort of a bit put off by the whole thing i mean i'm still i guess into the avengers a little bit does it still touch into that would i be snobby and like oh, this is also cliche about it or would i enjoy it what do you think I, hold up so you you don't care about action movies not that much, no. I, there's a certain joy you can get out of an action scene, but if that's like the focus of most of the movie, I can get bored pretty quick. Yeah. Um, it's not the focus of it. Um, there's there's a lot of talking. There's a lot of things going on. Oh man, the Nick Fury scene. Oh gosh, so good. Um, um, I I say you would enjoy it. I say you enjoy it. It has good story, or well, at least I think so. And um, a little teaser at the end. With some other characters, it, it it ties in. Of course, it ties in of him waking up and um he, him going to see his his past girlfriend or wife, should I say? And it it, it has some moments in there. I think the, I think it was a really good movie. I think it was a really good movie. I don't okay. I don't want to spoil it too much. And I already talked about one movie, so you go ahead. Office. Space. All right. So you had me watch a movie called Office Space. Yes. Which is why did you make me watch this movie? What do you mean? It's, why it's, did, well, I'm just curious. I'm just, I'm just I, curious. It's one of those old movies that I went back and watched, and I enjoyed. I really enjoyed okay. it. Okay. Ah, uh, I enjoyed it too. I'll give you that. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good movie for people who haven't seen this thing. Um, it it's a it's a comedy, but one that was not a box office success. It didn't make any money, and now it's basically just got a bit of a cult following around it. Mm-hmm. But the general story, the the thing that this movie does best is it, encap- it encapsulates the monotony, the drudgery, and the just utter dwarf 
of working in an office yeah. like my <laughs> god it reminded the place in this movie was it almost exactly like where i worked before like there wasn't so much oh screw establishment screw bosses blah 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 but there were you know they i, I felt very well treated where i was working before but just the general feeling of sitting there everyone's really quiet in your own little freaking cubicle or slightly open plan area with just people annoying you constantly that was bang on basically but the uh, I've got a question for you before I, I go any further, okay? If you could have a million, if you had a million dollars, what would you do? Invest. Invest. I really? Would, I would. I would make it. I would make it into more money. Okay. Well, if you've got, if you had all the money in the world, because that's what this question is supposed to be about. If you had all the money in the world, what would you do? All the money in the world. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Um, man, what would I do? I guess I guess the first thing is basically get a decent car, a very fuel efficient car, get a nice place and <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I would do like after that, probably just work into more investing. <laughs> That's all See- I think about is is generating uh income over time. I don't want to spend all the money and it's all gone. I I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't spend it all, but yeah. See, this is something I really enjoyed about this movie that is really close to me. Um, the, they established, guys, for people that don't know, basically they established this idea that these characters who are now working with this, you know, boring job, basically doing nothing, just living paycheck mm. to paycheck, and it's this horrible, horrible job. They talk in the movie about how when they were at uh, school, everyone had like a chat with their career guidance counsellor, and the question the guidance counsellor would ask these people is, if you could have a million dollars, what would you do? And the idea is whatever you answer that's what you're really passionate about that's what you should do for a living if you take money out of the equation what would you do and people would have their answer and then that's how you'd find your true calling in life um but the main character in this show he asks his friends that i'll do this i'd do this you know i'd repair cars so maybe you should be an auto mechanic and the main character just says so they say what was your answer to it and he turns around he says I didn't have an answer. Nothing. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And that's what this movie's about in a big way. It's um, it's about something that I think is really true to a lot of people in this world. We're told, oh, you have to have a true calling. You have to know what you're going to do. And you're sort of generally forced into believing you've got to work towards a certain career, especially while you're going through school. But um, for me especially... I never had an answer to that question. I never knew what I wanted to do. And I think, in truth, a lot of people don't know what they want to do. And it was this character sort of coming coming to terms with the fact he didn't have anything he wanted to do. If he had a million dollars, he'd sit about being lazy, doing nothing, and that's the way he'd spend his life. Um, And it's like a big theme in this movie. It's really, really cool. Eventually, sort of, the narrative goes over. All right, they all hate their job. They're eventually going to get fired. And, uh, you know, they do some stuff once that happens, like, to get back at the company. Um, But, like, that's a, a really big thing of it. Like at one point, the main character gets hypnotherapy so that he won't uh, be sat, um, like, so he won't hate everything about what he's doing. He basically says, Every day, every new day I wake up is the worst day of my life to his therapist. And his therapist says, Is that really true? He says, Yes. She says, What about today? Is that true for today? He says, Yes. <laughs> Why, when you're talking to me right now, this is the worst day of my life. Please make me better. Um, and so he gets this hypnotherapy and he just spends a whole day at home doing nothing. And he says, This is the greatest, most rewarding thing that I've ever done. And it is funny man it's it it's weird because it's such like a mute movie but what is up with the soundtrack on this film it's like loads of like really (laughs) like really gangster music all the time even through like really monotonous stuff it's like (laughs) like one of the characters is like this complete white nerd programmer guy in his mid-20s the movie starts with him rapping like really aggressively to this song in his car and like a black guy walks past like cleaning the road or something and then he sees him and he's like (laughs) he like barely starts singing like it's a comedy and it could be funny that, like all these people hate the printer at their office and everyone hates the printer especially don't forget this was this was 1999 this came out okay so and everyone hates the printer so when they leave their job they like take the printer with them and like lay it out in a field and then it starts playing this like really aggressive music like da 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 oh, it's, and then they like just smashing up this printer uh, with like baseball bats and stuff and like just showing all this hate it's really funny at times when they ask one guy, like, this guy's got like his roommate and he's like this really big, like slow guy. And he's like, if you had a million dollars, what would you do with your life? And he looks at him really seriously for a really long time. And then he <laughs> says, 
two girls at once. And he's like, ah, you're joking, right? And then he just stares at him really seriously for <laughs> yeah. ages. Goes, nah, man, I reckon I could do that. You could pay girls to do that. And he's like, what are you... This is his answer to the question. What about uh, Milton? Yeah. Did you, did I didn't you... like Milton. I didn't like him, dude. I thought that stuff was horrible. <laughs> he's like, he's like so, mumbling under his breath, like, and he gets pushed down into the basement. It's just the most ridiculous thing ever. Like, did how you, do you like Milton? A human being this this way. I I didn't like any of that humor. I I liked him a little bit at the start, but oh, they, is, they... is is that too close for home? Yeah, I mean, Milton is basically me. Uh, if anyone's <laughs> watching this, there's this guy called Milton. You know, he's. What? How old is he? He's like mid fifties, I guess. He is not a good looking guy. Okay, he's got like these massive unflattering glasses that make his eyes look huge, like bugs. He's like overweight as all hell, and he sits there like mumbling, like, <laughs> and he's like such a huge part of that. I didn't like any of that, dude. Come on. <laughs> every time, every time they'll tell Milton to do something, and he would like mumble on his breath, like trying to say no and stuff, but he doesn't say it loud enough, so no one, yeah. no one cares. No one takes him seriously, yeah. And you got the the douchebag as the boss. Oh my god! Yeah, gosh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. Cu- I ask you to come in on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to ask you to come in Sunday as well. Oh my god! Screw that guy. He, that's well acted, that dude. Yeah, and then He's he thinks his girlfriend parts. like got with him. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh well, there yeah. you go. Office space, guys. Mhm. All right, and my movie for you. I don't know why I'm picking this for you. I really don't. I'm not going to trick you. I'm not going to make you watch something horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I guess I've just been thinking about it, but I don't want to watch it. So I'm going to live through you vicariously. Big movie when I was younger. I'm pretty sure you may have even watched it. I think many people in that age bracket will have. Steven Spielberg movie, animated film. Oh. Um, The Land Before Time. Oh, yes. Yes. There you go. Yeah. So two animated movies this week. Yeah! I didn't know I was going to get given one, but The Land movie. Before Time. I got to go back to nostalgia. Yeah, there you go. Dude, oh. when I was a kid, I watched all of those. Like, they had eight in the end, and I watched them all. Yes. My favorite was when they like, went to the secret island and they made friends with a tyrannosaur. But yeah, The Land Before Time. The Land Before Time. And trust me, guys, if you're watching these, you'll enjoy that one. I promise you. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, boy. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. <laughs> Anyways... Land before time, baby. All right, so uh, <laughs> floor plans. So this is what happened. This is what happened. Oh, down to business. Down floor to business. plans. Not Guild Wars 2 yet. Floor plans. <laughs> floor plans. <laughs> floor plans. So this is what... Can I look at this? Can this I look at it? Yeah, yeah. You can look at it now. So I decided to create floor plans of what I thought uh, WP's place looked like. And, of course, this will be in the description um, if you guys are watching on YouTube. So... All right. And this so, is just my room, right? <laughs> this is your room. Okay. So the the red block, that's you know, like the bigger red block at the top of the floor plan right. is your door, okay. right? Right. The green block is where your desk is. The other red block, the little smaller one, is your little small circle window. <laughs> <laughs> what? So I can't even really see out of it while I'm sat at my desk. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's a window there. Your the purple is the bed. And the pink objects is like your closet, maybe, or your dresser. Dresser. You think I have a huge room? Um. So you, what are you saying? I should I should squish in the sides. It's more like a a square than a rectangle. Um. You see where I've got my bed. Right. Where where you've got my bed. That part of the room doesn't exist. <laughs> that's like a cut in from another room. So it's like an odd shape. Actually, that's wrong. It's the opposite of that. I'm not going to be able to describe this to you without drawing my own. But yeah, like I figured I've got that a it wasn't chunk. like a rectangle. I figured like it was like a a, a, a weird shape in the room. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I, I don't got time to be trying to trying to <laughs> trying to draw your <laughs> angles. And your... Wow, I I put a lot of effort into yours. <laughs> really, you just drew a box, just like I did. Yeah, because I thought it was. Uh, and you live in a box, so that works. <laughs> I live in a weird, six-walled really room. Damn it. And that should be represented. <laughs> yeah. All right. You so- are right, though, that I've got a bed, I've got one chest of drawers, I've got one wardrobe, and I've got a computer desk. I also have a buffet in here, all right? A buffet. Do you know what that is? No. What is a buffet? Or a puff. Do you know what a puff is? <laughs> no. Not like a gay man, but like um, something what? you rest your feet on. What a, do you what? know what? Do you- 
<laughs> what? what yeah, a, you could call a like a poof. That. What, what, what is that? What they call gay men? So you call fag cigarettes and gay men poof. I think it's a bit derogatory to say that. So maybe we shouldn't on the podcast. But I think so. Yeah, yeah. No, like so a buffet <laughs> is like. Um, Imagine uh, a part of your suite, like, so you've got your chairs, maybe you've got two along, you know, you might have a corner suite, something like that, but you'll have, like, another thing, and you can use it to sit on, and it's, like, squishy, you know, it's a part of everything else, or you can use it to rest your feet on in the middle of the room and look across. You seriously never had one of those? No. Well, I've got one of those, and it's squished right between my bed, so, like, there's <laughs> extra room to either spread out on the bed... Or sit on when I want to do other stuff. So yeah. Did, did I get That's... the shapes right? Did I? I mean, not the shapes, but did I get the like your bed is behind you? Is your door right directly behind you in the in your room? Uh, yes, but nothing like the way this this drawing is. Okay, so you see, well, you see, you got the the pink thing on the left. Yeah. Right. You see the the where that corner, that top left corner. Yeah. There's a corner desk there. That's a corner desk. And it's like a semicircle, uh, well, a quarter of a circle that comes out. So that's where that is. And then be directly behind me there is the is the is the door in where you've got my bed currently, like on the the opposite wall in the other corner, the top right corner. Ah. And then the bed is just under the door. And then near me is the other stuff. I, I, I'll have to draw it. Like otherwise, we'll have another podcast where we're like describing vague <laughs> shapes and colors. Well, there you go. And everyone in their Floor cars plans. is like, I don't understand. Yeah. So. All right, all right, all right. So I guess I guess we should do the other thing from the other podcast. So I'm going to let you oh, listen to oh, yes. a I am long so excited. and very drawn out, uneventful. Um, well, I guess it's not uneventful, but sh- right. shopkeeper, black guy, cashier. Of, of course, of course, as I said, everybody's black here in Atlanta. You never said that. That sounds quite racist. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> I'm black, guys. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Um, All right. I, should be, I should probably listen with you. Hold on. Hold yeah. On. All right. So we'll sync it up, yeah? All right. Operation is a go. What? I'm okay this time for it. Hey, how you doing? The deodorant. The deodorant. Oh. Where buy one get one fifty percent off. It's two different ones. It has to be the same one. So we'll just leave. Just leave. Uh, this one right here. Then I'll, I'll get another one. Of, I gotta get one, another one. I'll get the clear one since you like that one. Which one about going free? Which one? They're both. They're just two different items. I thought because they both had the per ticket. Yeah, it has to be the same. Okay, let me, let me get it. You want the clear one? Right? Yeah. I'll get the clear one. Oh. 
Like, well, did you just like look at them and like the? It's, all right, so this is what I was saying. All right, so we go in, <laughs> okay. we go in, and me and my wife go in, and we're like, okay, uh, we need some deodorant, some eggs, and some water or whatever. So we we walk up to the to the register. Some uh, there's a a black dude there, and he's <laughs> the most slowest cash register guy ever. <laughs> Just so was he really slow, slow, or did you just feel like you were timed? He he's just he's just really like you didn't hear him counting the money. He's like 10, 20, <laughs> 30, 35. It's like oh my gosh, please please, and he re- recounted it, recounted it, recounted it. I'm I'm pretty sure you got to make sure as a cash register, but wow. That was the most long and painful thing. I'm like, I, I don't even know if I even want to give this to you. I'm like, <laughs> forget this. He was like mumbling his words and stuff. Like, I don't know if, like, if you really look, go back and listen to it. I'm pretty sure other people are going to be able to. It's like mumbling. Blah, blah, blah. Like, that's him mumbling. All I, all I heard towards the end was, can I get Amber to cut them or service, please? <laughs> <laughs> like, that, just randomly. <laughs> that long silence as my wife goes and gets. All right, so the deodorant thing. So there were two deodorants. There were the clear one, right, which I like more because I don't like the I don't like the stuff that gets on your on your the shirt. The white stains. Yeah, yeah, I hate that. Yeah. So I get the clear one that, you know, it does a good job. So she likes she likes the one that, you know, has that white stuff on it. So all right. We we got two of them that have the deal. And this works at Walgreens and Walmart. It works everywhere. But here in CVS, it does not. So we right. walk up there and she's like, hold up. And she's really good with about the deal. She's like, hold up, that's not 50%? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That's not 50%? Right. And she's like, all right, I'll, I'll get the clear one for you, babe, since, you know, you want the clear one. And I was like, and so she goes and then it's a long pause of, like, awkward silence. You should have made, to- like, small talk with the slow guy at the register. Yeah, 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 maybe. Maybe I should have asked him for so- super small condoms. Please, <laughs> can I have some super small condoms? Do you have like itty bitty condoms? Oh, and then and then like your wife comes back. And she's like, "Why are you buying those for?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I just can't believe like I, this sounds like a supermarket to me. It sounds like a. It's a small little CVS with like kids running around and and yeah. 
Anywhere that's got like a customer service desk has to be like, and like there was that constant hum in the background. Like it sounds like aircon or it sounded like to me you were in like the frozen veg section all the time. (laughs) And like, I just, I imagine it to be like really well lit in there, a big kind of open room with lots of aisles and just very supermarket-y. Also, I don't think it being long was that bad. Like, I reckon people listen to that. That's like the kind of thing you, you just sort of zone out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's like, oh, yeah, this is... Have you ever seen those videos where uh, a woman just talks and and has sounds throughout yeah, the whole Yeah, what's that called? God, I... I used to know that really recently. ES something. ES. Yeah, it's weird stuff. I, I don't find it rela- relaxing. I guess because like of where people my whisper. headphones. My headphones are very, like, like the the studio monitors so i feel like i can hear everything that she says i can hear the water in her mouth as she swallows i yeah, do people not like, that, like that though i hate that but people like it that's that's a part of it what is that called that's really annoying me oh here's some mouth songs for people who like that so so i went to the shops last week what's up yes yeah man no, the point is they whisper really they whisper really closely to the microphone and this helps you go to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, and apparently people like that. <laughs> well, I, I feel I maybe one day I'll go back and redeem myself a little bit. And, and uh, have conversation with the guy? And have conversation with the guy. Man, please. Please. No, please. Yeah, yours, no, yours, thank you. No, goodbye. Was an accidental conversation with, you know, talking about your mom. I Your promise mom. you, if if I was just buying milk or something, I would be like, yeah, how are you go? How are you doing? You had a good day. Yeah, it's right. Quite early, isn't it? I would have talked about the weather. That's a very British thing to do. Easy, you can say that to anyone on the street, especially in the shops. I would have asked if she was getting paid a lot. I would have offered her a job at an imaginary place. Got a CV from I, her. I like, I like how, you, I like how you boasting now. I like how you boasting now. <laughs> <laughs> Totally well, we might do another audio adventure at some point. Uh, we yeah, need an idea. Right. Right? I, 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 I will, I will do an, a, another audio adventure, and this time it would be uh, more eventful. I will make, make things happen. What? Where else could you go for an audio adventure? Um, strip club. Oh right, yeah, of course. We were talking about that earlier before the podcast. Yeah, yeah, we sure were. I'm like, <laughs> hey, what's up? What's up, girl? How you doing? How you doing, girl? Um, so. You know, uh, she'll she'll come in. Let's, let's go in the private room. And like, oh, you need to okay. say to her, "That's quite the figure you have there." <laughs> you have a in lot a of British accent. A lot of a lot of junk in your trunk. That's what we should do. We should challenge each other to say specific like lines. Oh yeah. In conversation with whoever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the point. Sure. Sure. Anyways. Just say that randomly <laughs> to someone at the shops. That's quite the figure you have there. See ya. Bye. <laughs> Just as I can just imagine you leave. the slap mark that's going to be on your face. Wow, I was, no, they can't do that. I'd sue them. Some money's... <laughs> right. You're going to sue someone because you, you, you basically... Look, the only evidence will be of the slap, not of the slander. Mm. I say, uh... Mm. Well, what have you been playing this week? Dude, don't ask me this. I haven't played anything. <laughs> Come on, it's the same answer every time. It's DDR and it's... Guild Wars 2. I've been playing so much of Guild Wars 2. I, I've been playing so much of Guild Wars 2, but I also played, um, I guess, I mean, I guess, this guess this counts. On the stream, I played some Dark Souls. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> it's funny. It's funny because, all right, so I went the wrong way. So, the ch- all right, when you're playing Dark Souls on Twitch and you never played a Souls, like the Dark Souls franchise, people get really irritated at you. Yeah, really I can imagine irritated. this. Yeah, yeah. So I went the wrong way, and I'm trying to focus on not dying mm-hmm. and reading the chat at the same time. I went the wrong way into a harder area because it's, it's kind of like an open world. Oh, is right? that? I didn't know that about so the So I went into a harder area. I beat a couple of the guys, um, but, but they like they too hit you, basically. Um, and they're a lot faster and everything. So I did okay but it's still like i didn't have enough stamina like uh when you level up you get more stamina you get a lot more things you get you could damage more and i was in this rough area and i was doing decently but people were like oh go back you're in the wrong area so i go back to the after i died 
like 15 times. I go <laughs> back to the normal area and it was easy. Yeah? It was so easy. I guess I've gotten used to fighting the big guys and then I didn't die. Well, I that's didn't what I did, right? I didn't I didn't die. I died like once. No, I did like twice once I went to the easier area and that's like after like 2 hours of play. You know, after dying 15 times. So, yeah, I got my humanity and I just stayed with humanity like pretty much the entire time because I just didn't die. Um it was it was good. It was what good. What do you mean by that? What do you mean you got your humanity? Is when that a you game die, mechanic? you become uh dead. An undead. Oh, and right, you, okay. like your face changes and you get more and more ugly as you die repeatedly and your life bar keeps going smaller. You That's smaller. a pretty cool death system, actually. Yeah. Um, it doesn't go too small. It, it has a cap of this, how small, like probably like half, more than half your health, I think. Are there, are there perks to being alive? Yeah. Um, basically, someone can join you if you're alive, if you have your humanity. Oh, um, okay. So you could summon someone, um, which is actually pretty cool. Tried Were people that doing that on the stream? Um, I did it once on the stream. And then the guy was saying all these rude words, so we we had to put a stop to it. (laughs) No, but it it was a good time. It was a good time. People who stuck around after I actually went to the area, the right area, you know, they saw my proness. My Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew Hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what they call you, right? Matt Matt Hardcore? Yeah, that's what they call me. Uh That's what they call me. (laughs) It's so funny. (laughs) It, yeah, it's funny that because they say that, and you know that reflects who you are. So yeah, I mean it just makes perfect sense. That's why it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> the other the other words they call me, it's not true whatsoever. Oh no, what might that be? <laughs> Matt Casual. Oh no, that just sounds outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, and that's why I have one thousand gold in the bank. Um, wow. Um. <laughs> And anyways, uh, so so Guild Wars Two, poop. Section yeah, Guild Wars. Of- yeah, yeah. <laughs> we really should change the name of this. Yeah, because it's gonna Wh- sound horrible. Here we go. Guild Wars Two Gold. Gold. So yeah. much gold. <laughs> yeah. There you go. See, that's like we have Digging a gold subscription mines. to the game. Mm-hmm. So much gold. Oh, by b- by the way, um. <laughs> The, By the way, the, not Guild Wars 2 related. No, Guild Wars 2 related. I did the oh. animation. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. I, I wonder if I asked you yet. All right. The voices for the for the rabbit. Did I ask you this already? What do you no, think that what? was? I didn't. What was do you there think the voice for the rabbit was? Do you think I don't was... remember there being a voice. Yes. There's a voice for the rabbit. Was he, was he like... No. <laughs> he screams and... Oh okay, sorry, I didn't remember that. I don't remember. Rem- I guess he must have well, screamed. I guess, when he I, got guess stomped. I guess that's a good thing that you don't know that that it kind of blends in with everything. Yeah, no, I guess it makes sense that he did scream when he got stomped. I mean, when, it would be weird if he didn't. I was talking to my wife, and my wife was like, "What? What did you do for the, the bunny?" Like, she was, and I was like, "It's me." She's like, "What? What do you do? You, you change your pitch or something?" No, like, no, I just, I just. I, oh, just, I have to listen to this now. I just, I, have to to this. I just acted it out, and she was just like, "What?" And I showed her, I showed her the file, like this is me doing it, and then she was like, "What the heck?" Yeah. What? No way is that you? I'm listening to it now. Yeah, dude, that's me. Why is it so unbelievable? Yeah, that that is me. That's so high pitched, though. That sounds. You had to have changed that. You had to have shifted that. That's all me. Wow, and that was all you as well. Do you want to do a reenactment on the podcast? Get way away from the mic so it doesn't blow people's ears out. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Um, it's, hold on. Let me, it's a let me... lot of pressure. So here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> a lot of pressure. Hold on. It comes out really deep voiced. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Oh, let me hear it. I'm gonna hear it again. I'm listening to it. It's like. <laughs> I'm gonna try. <laughs> so, I, I, that sounded like you. Okay, yeah. No, I you're bridging the gap now. So, I can so, hear that. So, so, so something like that. I I had to I had to add more water to it. As you hear it, like it sounds like yeah. he's really scared. It's like Wah! so I had to add more of that. But I that's after a couple tries, and I'm like, oh, I like this one. 
and I, wow. I just made my wa- my mouth watery, and I I shifted, I shifted like my jaw a little bit to kind of get the the bunny sound out. You know that that sound you put on as well when the chest appears, the daily chest. Yeah. I don't think I've heard that for a long time. Maybe I just turned my the specific audio setting down. Is that still in game? Yeah, I got I got that from in game. Unless they re they patched it again. No, I haven't heard that for like a year, maybe longer. That kind of noise. Oh man. Wow. Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe they did change it, and because that what I the sound effect I have there was when I wanted to make this a machinima from way back behind oh, wow. the scenes. Oh wow, you still had it. Yeah, from way back. I I've been wanting to do this for a very very long time. And you've got a lot more ideas as well, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I do. It's just it's just that cost a lot of money Mm -hmm. (laughs) so you know it's just like should i go for another one or not you know but i i Mm -hmm. like to put money i mean that's what i've been doing this whole time is putting money back into the channel constantly spending more money than i get because really as you know youtube kind of sucks uh can i make the announcement that Uh, many people already know about but our first guild was Subong. all right this one here that i'm highlighting subtly for you it's like we're in each other's ears while also holding a conversation. It's amazing. So, a few uh, podcasts ago, we put out a bounty, a challenge for people. This challenge yes. has now been fulfilled. Um, we talked about uh, some Easter eggs in Guild Wars 2 um, that can be found in the what na- by the way of the Swinging Boys. There was one uh, who could be seen in uh, PVE just outside Lion's Arch, high up in the rafters over the archway. You could see him swinging up there, and there was also one. I've still never been there. Do you know how the World versus World one works? Um. Yes. 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 All right. So I made a video about this uh, quite a while ago. What happens okay. is you go to um, the Borderlands, and you go to the jumping puzzle, right? Mm-hmm. So once you go to the jumping puzzle, don't you know when you fall down the waterfall, right? Yeah, and you land on the other side of the waterfall. You land on like pretty much inside the waterfall. You jump on the first bits. You jump on that tree branch, right? Yes. Is that tree yeah. branch over to the left-hand side. Uh-huh. On that tree branch, if you look on the wall... If you could, e- you can even use like, for instance, uh, a symbol from a guardian, the three on the staff. Okay. Right? You can kind of put it. Like, if you use any reticle skill, you can see where the hole is. So there's a hole behind vines against behind the wall. vines, and ah. uh, pretty much the easiest way to get there is using an elementalist. Using ride, ride the, the lightning. lightning. And you can ride the lightning, you jump and ride the lightning straight up into it. And what you're gonna see is cat assassins. And then you're going to see a swinging boy. Very creepy. Very creepy the first time Can you time get, like, right up and close to the swinging boy? Yes, on that yes, one? yes. He's, like, right there in front of you. Wow. Because all right the other ones are way off in the distance, aren't they? Yeah. This guy's right there. Which I didn't even think about that. Because I, 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 I like, how come I didn't think about the first swinging boy I ever found? Mm-hmm. So weird. So weird. But, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that there were more. And then when you mentioned it, I was like, oh, okay. So the, the, and there's another one in Gandaran Fields. Yeah, who's really high up. He was actually repositioned when Lion's Arch was burnt down to the Vigil Keep. There are two children in the Vigil Keep for the record, but only one of them swinging as far as I'm aware, so that doesn't count. Anyway, uh, the devs have always been very open about the fact there is a third swinging boy and supposedly no one had ever found it. I actually think in retrospect, many people have fa- found the third swinging boy. They just didn't know it was a part of a trio, just like what Matt was describing there with the word versus world thing. I think they would have just seen it as like, oh, this is a cool little Easter egg and they're done. But uh, someone did identify where the third one was with respect to everything. And that bounty has now been claimed. For those who want to know, it is in the Battle of Kylo. Turns out there was one swinging boy in PvE. There was one swinging boy in uh, World vs. World. And one in competitive PvP. Um, The Battle of Kylo was the first map that the devs ever did. And it's like way up there behind the blue base, was it? In like a giant... Yeah. Yeah, All the way in the last... the, 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 I guess the first window from the top. Yeah, it's a way really up. speck, a speck of a yeah. like, top left-hand corner of a swinging boy. It's yeah. a l- slightly a little bit more creepier than the other ones. Yeah, I mean, that swinging boy is miles up on a ruined tower in the middle of a battlefield, supposedly, in the lore. And he's just like, la, 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 swinging Yeah, you tried here. to break out, right? 
Did you ever? Because yeah, I, I was yeah. watching you, and, and did you ever get close to it? Is there another way to get mm. close to it, or there's no, no way? I, I, I'm sure there would be a way, maybe if you spent long enough. But personally, I, I broke out of Kylo to try and get a closer look at it, um, and it's really hard. You know, this thing is tiny. The only reason I recognised it so quickly was because I knew that Telltale animation. You know, from having seen the other ones. Yeah. If you didn't have that reference to go by, this thing is a couple of pixels in size with with where you see it. Um. I think you can take like a high res screenshot and maybe get a, a better look at it, but damn, he is not easy to find. Anyway, he was found twenty gold from each of uh, Matt and I to the winner, and um, I kind of want to do another one, but I also don't want to spend any money because I was a <laughs> bit sour about spending money on this reward. I was like, damn it, I was grinding all day for dungeons, and now I just have to give all this away. <laughs> um, but maybe I don't know. What do you think? Should we do others if we find a good one? If we find a good one, yeah, we we could do it again. We could we could make it a. Uh, um a decent reward there see there's weird stuff dude i i learned that there's something on the trading post like a type of outfit there's a recipe for a specific weapon that uh only drops in like mid-level zones and no one knows where that recipe comes from so like there's a recipe in the game that will allow you to craft something new and no one knows like i don't think it's a unique skin but the item that you get from it at least is unique um and it's on the trading post people are spending like 10 gold plus on it for this essentially useless recipe but because it's so rare and no one really knows where it comes from there's weird stuff out there maybe if we can identify what one of them is we'll have another community wide hunt but yeah i i didn't expect someone to find it so fast too Pretty, pretty weird. I think it was pretty quick. This is why I said at the start, I reckon a lot of people knew about that Swinging Boy. Right. I really do. I think it would have been very easy to have just looked up and been like, okay, Swinging Boy, find some alteration of once you figure... The way the guy claims to have found the reward was he was saying that he... um. He looked up the name of the dev who made those maps that we knew the original Swinging Boy was from, and then what else she had worked on. I believe it was a girl that had done it, and she had supposedly worked on Battle of Kylo and found it. But I think the most uh, the most obvious way to have found this is just to have looked on the forums for even a little while, uh, like PvP Easter eggs. I'm sure if you Google that, you'd probably find some weird stuff. Or Guild Wars 2 Easter egg Battle of Kylo, Guild Wars 2 Easter egg Raid on the Capricorn, so on and so on and so on, and someone would have mentioned it before. I'm sure of it. Um, and maybe that's how the, the easiest way that it will be found. Tips for the next challenge we do, people. Tips, tips for them tips. Tips wow. for them trips. Tips, tips, tip drill. There it is. Mm-hmm. Anyways, there you go. Um, The next bong is... Bong. <laughs> can I do the best bong first? Uh, that, would be, uh, that would be this one down here. Yeah, can we go with this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could go with so, that one. Bong currently on sale in Guild Wars 2. On sale, 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 sale. Get it hot. Hot, 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 hot. hot, hot. Some, yeah, okay. <laughs> Our Black Lion Keys, that's their sale for the moment. I don't know how much cheaper they are, but they are on sale. So if you guys want to get some, really, there's little going on, obviously, with the game right now. We're just sort of waiting for season two info. Um, but those are on sale. Do you think you'll pick any up? No. No, no not what, at all. Why not? Why not? Cause I'm straight. I'm but straight. But think of the money you'll save. Oh, the money! The money I will save, or I can just save it and buy something else. Okay, but what if you get like a permanent black uh, bank access? Ooh. What if Ooh. I made this statement? It's probably a lie. It's probably not true. But what if I made this statement to you right now? One person who hears me saying about this to sale and buys a black line key as a result of it. One of you listening to me right now, one lucky listener, will get a permanent bank access express. I promise you it will happen. There'll be comments. People will be confirming it. We said, oh, yeah, yeah I got it. It's awesome. You, you know, people you, might Matt. do it and they, they might blame you. You might get angry messages. Oh, no. Angry messages? <laughs> <laughs> Never had those before. Yeah, so uh, it could be you, though. This is what I'm saying. Maybe you should buy a black clunky. It could be me. It could be me, right? Just like everyone who, who gets a dawn by putting a couple of greens inside, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It could be you. Someone actually did a math on the Mystic Forge the other day, and they found out that... Actually, it may have been disputed, but apparently one of the cheapest ways to do it would be with greens, except you'd have to, like, forge thousands upon thousands upon thousands of greens to finally get it, so it's just not worth <laughs> the, the sheer amount of clicking um, to actually finally go through. But yeah, anyway, so Black Lion Keys on sale. Bong number two. This one I found really interesting. Did you see that thing about the Chinese World versus World Keys? Yeah, that it's in it's in Head Start, but it's like what five hundred thousand people trying to get inside of World v. World right now. 
Wow, what the hell? That's really high. Well, 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 I know- well they bought. Well, it's sold out from for five hundred thousand. It's kind of the uh, the boxes have sold out already. Yeah, um, and the world the world v world queues are are pretty like large at the moment. Yeah, right they're in the order of thousands, wow. thousands of but you're, like you're sitting in world versus world queue. You're like, oh yeah, I'm one thousand two hundred. This is fine. You literally sat there idling in game for it up like the whole day. I don't know how quickly those queues go. But jeez, doesn't that sound nuts? I kind of want to play the Chinese client. Mm-hmm. Like Blue, I believe, has been streaming PvP at least on the Chinese client, like kicking right. everyone's butts, like because they're also bad at it. They don't know what they're doing. Uh, they're also having like TPVP tournaments already over on um, China, and like people were examining the amount of uh, different types of classes there were. And most people were just playing all the heavy and the medium armor classes. There are very few light armors around there at all. Uh, but I mean, it just looks so good, and like the um, the announcer voice in the Chinese client is like so crazy, epic, amazing voice that he announces every single time you're playing over on the Chinese yeah. client. Man, C- could you imagine if they have voice packs? Voice packs. You know, I was talking about this just earlier today. The idea of like putting your own voice on your character, so you could be like, "Oh yeah, um, I would when I'm playing as Liss. Liss, whenever she says." Oh my god, I've gone down, or whatever, you know. I'm hurt. Instead, it's like, I'm hurt. You know, it's just my voice, wooden potatoes. Ooh. Wouldn't you like that? So, Matt Visual in Guild Wars 2 sounds like Matt Visual? Yeah, I'll be like, you know, seize their points, or something like that. That would be that'll be pretty cool. I wonder what the limits are on what you can do with this game. Do you know what text mod is? Uh, yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, so it was this thing for the first game, and it works in the second too, where you just replace certain textures with other textures. And it's okay to use, like the devs never minded that much. Oh, but yeah, okay. Uh-huh. People could change the UI and stuff. I was looking at the fact you can use text mod in Guild Wars 2. All right, this is a, a, a not safe for work thing I'm going to tell people about, but it's funny, and if you've got the stomach for it, it's pretty interesting. You know uh, Reddit has Girls Gone Wild, or Just Gone Wild? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. There is a Guild Wars Gone Wild subreddit that I have found out about today. So these are people, mostly just to be funny about it, these are people that, like, post dirty screenshots from Guild Wars 2, however they can do it. So, like, you know, you could armor preview and make your character look naked. They, like, share item codes so that you can do it and do these weird photoshops of, of sometimes quite explicit stuff, so I, I will warn people, but it's hilarious. And uh, I saw, like, one of these posts, someone had used text mod to make their character naked in Guild Wars 2. And obviously they could only see it on their client, but, man, funny stuff. What why were we talking about text mod? Heck, you. You. N- yeah, why Why was I talking about text mod, though? Not not Guild Wars Gone Wild, something else. What were we originally talking about? The Chinese. Chinese, we, we, Chinese stuff. Yeah. I oh, yeah, sound Switching packs. the voice packs. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can change textures, your base maybe... is under attack. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can change voices. Yeah. What are the limits? The 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 sky. The sky is the limit. Literally. I'm doing a dramatic you gopher face right now. What are vision. the limits? Limitless. Yeah. So anyway, there Chinese world versus one keys. Very very long. So what is your stat stat cap progress? Yeah, I mean, we're not hard up for topics this week. No, I don't want anyone to get that impression. We're, 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 um, we're kind of just, like, rolling with the punches here. Punches? What mm-hmm. are you talking about? These aren't punches. They're, uh... Yeah. They're bliss. No, nope, <laughs> They're nope, wonderful. They, yeah. <laughs> they're awesome. <laughs> I, 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 just because just I've mentioned this most podcasts, um, you know, I'm going for stat cap. I was trying to get full ascended, full infused. Hit a big milestone today. I got everything I need to fully infuse my armor. Do you want to take a guess, a ballpark guess, on how much money that costs? Just the armor. Six pieces of gear, infusions for. Six pieces of gear of ascended armor. And no, no, no. And I, I've already... I, I, no, just the infusions. I've already got the ascended armor. Okay. That cost me around 600 gold or so. Now the mm. infusions. Just the infusions. Just the infusions. I don't know. Um, is, is it more or less than armor? Well, I, I just and whatever your best guess is, these are, this is plus less. five. This is pl- plus five oh. power for each one, and plus five agony resist. The very best you can get. I have um four hundred. It cost me around seven hundred and fifty gold oh, for six infusions. Oh my gosh! 
Six infusions. It's crazy. It's a stack of blood for each. And I was like, yeah, I finally got all my blood. This is awesome. And then I realized it's passion flowers as well. And you need a hundred of each of those. And they cost a ridiculous amount of money too. And then it's a bunch of skill points and mystic coins. But I've finally done it. I've finally done it. I've got my armor ready. That's step one. Now I need to do my trinkets and my weapons. And I'm finally at stat cap. I'm, I'm May- assuming that they're all Zerker. Yeah, it's all Zerks and it's all power stuff I'm going for. The armor's very expensive because it's all defensive infusion slots and I want to put offensive infusions in them so it costs you more money to do that. Um, but So it'll be a little bit cheaper going for my trinkets because I've got some offensive slots in there. The weapons come with offensive slots. So instead of needing 250 blood, I only need 100 blood. Um, but there are still two more defensive slots I need to fill. Anyway, it's it's progress. Oh my god, it feels so good though, dude. So good. And it looks amazing on my bank. Honestly, the idea of going for a legendary and like having nothing else to do in Guild Wars 2 is baloney. This is crazy. This is like so much more than a legendary means so much more to me. And I'm finally making some decent progress. Well, it, it's always been a matter of opinion, though, when it comes down to that thing. If if they don't want to do that, then they feel like it's no end game. It's always yeah. been that way. Yeah. It's, all, it's all about what you like. If you don't like the game, that's totally different. If you don't like what it has to offer, but people who like what it has to offer stay, and that's just how it is. I mean, I mean, most of the time people I've played what like pay like twenty five bucks for this game. I, I'm pretty sure you could get your twenty five bucks worth easily. Yeah, if you just, don't like what, even just that getting to the uh, horrible end of Zaitan, you've probably got your twenty five bucks. Let's let's be honest. Even just doing that, I reckon. Um, anyway, look, look, there's a. I've sent you a link. That is one of my bank tabs. That's my armor stuff complete. That's all the stuff I needed for that. Including the Ascended Armor itself, what? I'm well over like 1,300 to 1,400 gold just to get that section complete. Look at all those bloods. Yeah, look at all that mats, man. And then obviously Damn. the armor's the stuff on the left. That is but sexy. Yeah. Sexy! Sexy! What is that song? I always do that. Do you know what that song is? Or why that's in my head? Why that's like a thing I do? Why is anything in your head? Wow. What do you mean? <laughs> Well, 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 something I've been doing. I've been playing Mesmer. All right. Okay. Yes. Detail. I, 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 all right. So I decided to make a character, right? On the stream. I was like, oh, let me make a character. Uh, I want to go Azura. I've, I, I don't have an Azura anymore. I deleted, I deleted visual. My old first character. Rest in peace and peace. Yeah. yeah. That, this is before legendaries were account bound and everything was account bound and everything like that. I was like, nah, I'm not going to have anything that looks like a toothpick. So I end up really wow. liking the Zora. I was like, wow, this is really cool. So I, I made a Mesmer, um, female Sura, and it's like the cutest thing ever. It's like the cute, and I love the. Ad- I was like, man, I miss these animations. I guess I've gotten so used to my Norn. It's like I'm. I'm so glad to be small and fast. Yeah, it feels amazing, doesn't it? It does, and when you get a speed boost, it's like wow. And like the way they lean when you like turn a corner, and right. like their head and their ears flop to one side before the inertia carries the rest of their body around. It's so cool. I have like the fattest ears possible and the longest. <laughs> I like fat long ears. And um I like the way they hold like the great swords, like if they hold it on their shoulder, they rest it there. Yeah, like, yeah. It's great. I love it's that. great. It's great. I'm just glad that I don't have to uh worry about my legendary only being on this character. Uh so of course, I've yeah. been really enjoying the Mesmer in general. I love the mechanics. I've I've listened to so many guides. And I've learned a lot about each like weapon and every oh my gosh. It's it's really powerful. And basically it's a noob killer, really, at at its core. Mm-hmm. If you don't really know if you I mean and, and a good mesmer can really confuse a, a experienced player too as well. I mean, some people will, will boast that, you know, they can't get confused, but I think um I I I think i might go full on in mesmer for a while just like i did ng mm-hmm. and it's kind of sad because i like played my 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 guardian so much and i spent so much on like the builds and stuff it's crazy that's why i never want to get that's why i haven't got ascended armor it's because of that it's just like ah oh, forget it like i'm not yeah but if you think about it for if you think about it for alts it's so much better now that it's account bound right right the, one of the only reasons i'm doing what i just described is because when i get all this i can do that for any light armor i want 
That's cool. The, the funny thing is I use Great Sword, Sword, and Focus both on my Guardian and my Mesmer. <laughs> that yeah. is the most match made in heaven thing I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. It's great. It's great. I, I've been enjoying the Mesmer, long story short. I, I love the mechanics behind it. Um, I love the different builds that people are going for. But, you know, it's mostly Zerker. Um, and uh, it's really fun to push and pull people all the time, especially in World v. World and making people die. So that's also really good. What is your like your default stance when you're considering classes now? Um, how they fight one another? Um, the playstyle. Yes, when I'm choosing a class, it's all about the playstyle. I I feel like sometimes when I get the guardian, I feel like other classes have more to them than I do. Mm-hmm. Like I yes, guardians are really good at being tanky and you know, taking blunts of the attacks. You have to really be on them in order for them to, like, you know, die. Like, it, 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 there's some skill involved with the Guardian because the Guardian doesn't have, you know, they can't, like, switch positions with clones. They can't stealth uh, like uh, like like thieves can do. They can't, they, they don't have any of that extra stuff. They don't have the CC of the NGs. Basically, we're just a tanky mess. We remove conditions like crazy. Um... And I mean, we could do damage. It's just, you know, it, when you when you count the factor in a lot of CC and stuff like that, they other classes will have more damage than us because they can stop us from doing things. I mean, of mm-hmm. course, you have to play like Scepter or whatever to get some of that CC. But yeah, like it, when you look at it that way, I kind of like to change my play style every once in a while. And that's when I went NG for a couple months, and now I feel like I'm gonna go Mesmer and. I don't know if I, when I get to 80, I would stay a Mesmer, but we'll see. We'll see. But I've been enjoying no, I, the gameplay so far. Yeah. What you're doing, I think, is the best way to play Guild Wars 2. It's fun. They're encouraging it in a big way. And it lets you learn so much more about the game. You know, like, you don't really understand everything you need to know until you've played the classes from their perspective. Like, you can know that Mesmer summon phantasms and stuff, but until you've been in their head and known their rotations and their cooldowns and stuff, yeah. it adds so much more to the way you, you fight against stuff. And, like, I just think it's essential and really fun to do that kind of stuff. Really cool. And and that's what I've been enjoying pretty much this past week in Guild Wars 2 is just basically playing another character and really enjoying learning another class. It's it's really good stuff, and I think people on the stream like are learning with me as well. It's like, oh, okay, so you do this, you do that, do that. Like, and I don't think a lot of people play Mesmer, do they? Like, there, there's there's a lot of Mesmer, like but but it's it's, it's one not, of the least played classes in the game. Yeah, some people just don't play, it. And, and they got a big nerf as well. Uh, this patch, which is kind of sad. Um, mm. they even switched some of their grandmasters to like another trait, so because it was like, I don't know, it, it was built. It was built. It was a really weird change. Them yeah. swapping the grandmasters it was actually an undocumented change, also and very concerning and weird that they did it. Yeah. On this topic, uh, the last bong one th- something that I really wanted to talk to you about, and it it really segues quite nice into what we're already going on about. What do you think the highest skill cap profession in Guild Wars Two is? Have a think about it. Uh, what do you and mean? You explain that a little bit more. What is the profession in Guild Wars 2 that has the most to learn that you can take the furthest? That, you know, has the most complexities to it, the most things to consider, the most things to master. The highest skill cap. And before you vote, tell me what you're thinking. I've linked uh, Matt a straw poll uh, where people have been discussing it. Lots of people voted on this, and once you vote, you will find out what the community in general thinks, and I'm curious what your thought is. My first thought, my first thought straight up, is ng because you have to target players and you have to learn uh the you know the movement of the players and then because ng you have to constantly switch your kits you have to constantly switch everything that's my first thought i also mm-hmm. think about like a little bit of mesmer a little bit but i i mean there's a lot of stuff you can do with a mesmer you can constantly switch between your clones there's a lot of boon ripping there's a lot of a lot of different styles to it. A lot of people, I've never seen a class that you could constantly switch your utilities. Like some, like I, I guess like it, with guardians is like, you, you use your shouts, renewed focus, but yeah, done. yeah, you use renewed focus. That's that's just it. Like with with mesmer, you constantly switch. Like with mm-hmm. ng, you use bomb kit, you use nades, sometimes you use toolkit, 
and sometimes you use the other stuff depending on the situation, um, like you know slick shoes or whatever or rocket boots. It, it depends on the situation, but most of the time you'll see you'll always see a bomb kit and a um, a grenade kit, you know, because that's the high damage. Like it's just crack. But like mesmer, there's so many utilities useful utilities yeah, very very useful and it, if so for people who don't really understand me i have never played mesmer mesmer is constantly buff teammates while doing damage so you can buff yourself constantly while making it bad for the other for the opponent opponent like there's stuff that give you might, like when it bounces, when it bounces to your character and other enemy, uh, other allies. There's stuff, and and then it hurts al, and it puts conditions on enemies. It is, there's lots of stuff like that when it comes down to uh, mesmer. Um, so it's it's I would say it's complex. I'm not gonna say oh my gosh, I don't know if it's a high skill cap, but the first thought was mesmer and ng, um, ng because you kind of have to click the ground a lot. And it kind of gets a little, a little annoying. I gotta say, um, and that's well, kind of why it's kind of stopped. I think NG is a really solid answer because NG has access to every single unique mechanic professionalized yeah. that everyone else has. And the except combo fear. finishers, dude. The combo finish is ridiculous. If there's mm -hmm. a good NG out there that has been playing since launch, he he could almost be unbeatable. Like l seriously. That's why you see those outnumbered fights with with that guy. He's Yoshish, Yoshish is his name. You know, he's probably been playing NG for a very long time, and he just mm -hmm. like he just knows what he's doing. He's damaging you while buffing, giving himself twenty five might, and just destroying you with all this stuff. I, I feel like a really really good NG is a very hard beat, and I've dueled a couple of NGs, and that's annoying. There's a big difference between. Uh, ng that has been playing for a while and has devoted a lot of time to his ng then a uh, relatively okay ng that plays it on the side like you can tell the difference mm -hmm. you know and that that's a mark of a profession with a high skill cap yes so your answer um let's see what are the other ones <laughs> well if you click the link ranger. they're all they're <laughs> all there <laughs> oh man rangers hate me i know i know you guys hate me it's okay it's okay um uh it's either, Ranger, it's yeah, either it's true. Mesmer. Ranger. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. go, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You want to add to that? It, no, it's absolutely true. Ranger does not have a very high skill cap. <laughs> okay. What, and do you know what the lowest skill cap class is in all of Guild Wars 2? Warrior. <laughs> Warrior. Well done. Warrior. And it remains incredibly effective at the same time. People shouldn't. People can't really dispute that. No. There is much less to think about and play with on a warrior than anything else. So it's either Mesmer or NG. Mesmer or NG. I have to pick one. I'm going to go with NG Should I? because it makes more sense, I guess, more than a Mesmer. But Mesmer is also a really good pick. I picked Thief, by the way, when I voted. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. No, I, I, genu I genuinely believe from TPVP... Thief has an awful, uh, has a very, very high skill skill ceiling. I'm gonna... It's very punishing, and you, especially for TPVP, you need to know a lot about what you're doing, the matchups you can win, when to back cap, and so like there, there's a lot to Thief, and that's what I picked, and I still stand I, by I, what I, I picked. I, 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 I definitely agree with you. I feel like a really good Thief is destruct like crazy that they know exactly when to pop stealth they know exactly when to come behind you they they, they it, and a good thief knows other players a good thief knows the other professions those thieves are dangerous because they know exactly what you're gonna pop you mm -hmm. know and they you know it it depends on you of course your your skill cap but like i've seen a thief just dis dis destroy me because he capitalized on a mistake i make Mm -hmm. As soon as as soon as I pop something, like oh, you don't have your block anymore, <laughs> and he just comes at me. But I'm gonna pick Mesmer just because I'm gonna pick Mesmer. All, all right. right, let's. I'm gonna pick Mesmer. Elementalist. All right, so Elementalist is the first vote with a uh, thousand three hundred and nine votes. Mm -hmm. Right then, there's Ng with uh twelve hundred votes, and then Mesmer in third place. With 590 votes. And look at where Thief is. Fourth. Fourth with 435. 34. What votes. do you think about those results? Um, 
I this is what the general community believes the highest skill cap class is in the game. Because of elementalists can do everything. No, they can't, though. Yes, they can. They cannot do everything. Dude, People they are can fools. be extremely banky, um, tanky, dude. Extremely tanky while being able to... That doesn't mean that they can well, do everything. No, that doesn't no, mean that they get no. stealths and really wide access oh, well, to reflects well, I mean, and stuff. I mean, like, when it comes down to uh, play style, like bunking and damage dealing, they can spike, they can bunk, they can be a little bit in between with a lot of sustain. Um, I mean, man, Ellie Bunk is amazing. Well, but don't forget, this poll isn't about the variety of things a class oh, can right, do. Right, it's right. about I'm skill sorry. cap. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're going on topic. Um, I, I, I guess I could see the elementalist. I feel, I feel like if you just learn rotations with the elementalist, that it wouldn't be that much of a skill cap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For me, I don't know. That's just my opinion. I know you know you pay elementalists. You know better than I do. Um, I the the I I reached a uh, level eighty elementalist, and I I feel yes, yes, it's you know it takes some getting used to, uh, depending on your build, but I don't think it's the highest skill cap. I would say NG and Mesmer, and I I think it's I think elementalist is right down. It's a like the fifth one below thief, before it would have to be the fifth. I I definitely agree with NG Mesmer and thief being up there, and everything else being down. Um, but I don't think it should be th- number one. Yeah, me neither. I-, I think that the greatest argument for it being number one is it is the squishiest thing in the game by a wide margin. And as the squishiest thing in the game, perhaps it has a higher skill cap because you have to pay attention to sustain more than anyone else does. But I think that's a flimsy argument. I think people just pick Ellie because they see it has achievements. And if they haven't played Elements List, they think the achievements are really complicated and give you more options than they really do. And over Engineer, who also has something sort of similar, Elementalists also get Conjure weapons. So it may be true that Elementalists have to learn a lot more skills than other classes, but that doesn't mean rotation-wise and gameplay-wise, it's a difficult class to play. High-end PvE Ellie builds are certainly not interesting. Thief is definitely high skill cap, just because a good Thief will actually keep their initiative high while other Thieves won't. Mm. Um, but most of it's just like spammy stuff. Um, I It could be because I've mained Ellie for so long and I don't consider anything about Intimidate anymore but i i think that it's crazy to me that ellie came at the top i never even considered it angies have way more um combos as well combo yeah they do they have tons of stuff they can do so many things i i i I find it very surprising thief um thief is kind of weird i think the reason why it's lower and not a little bit higher is because um new players can play thief and easily kill someone just by just and and they could just keep stealthing. I I think people just have a bad bad vibes when it comes down to thieves. I think that's true actually. Yeah, I don't I feel like when I lose to thieves I shouldn't because they get so much quality of life. They can just stealth and just stealth and just stealth. I think at least from a TVP, TPVP perspective, though, Thief is probably the highest skill cap thing you can play. Like, most thieves don't even consider how good their short bow is and they don't use it. Like, good thieves know oh that weapon gosh. very well. It's so annoying. You know? I'm like, man, is this a ranger? No, it's a thief that keeps... He keeps going Disabling back. Shot. He keeps kiting me. Kiting yeah. me over and over and over again. I'm like, man, I hate my guardian. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's why I use great sword. Um, maybe you know I a judge's intervention is really good to get up and close and personal with those guys, and of course the sword, mm-hmm. um, the sword too. So th- that's why I have those because I'm tired of I'm tired of those damn <laughs> range classes. Holy crap! Um, and uh, that's why I wanted to try something different. I want Absolutely. to try something nice and fresh, and Mesmer is definitely something I, I, I've, I've always... That was the class... Did you ever have a class at beta that you wanted to play, but you didn't play? Um, you end up just not playing it, because you just weren't well, interested. I played Ellie in beta, but I always wanted to be Mesmer at launch, because my GW1 character was a Mesmer, and Mesmer was my favorite class. But when it came to launch, I played Mesmer about 20 to 30 levels up, and then got bored of it really quickly and wanted to go back to my Ellie. So my main was almost a Mesmer. Very almost a Mesmer, but uh, that changed, because the class bored me so much. That and was me. To Ellie. That was the same thing with me. I was like, oh, I don't like this. I For, for some reason, my mind... In in like at launch, I played the mesmer. I'm like these cooldowns are ridiculous. 
Like, no, it was a cooldown thing, really. Yeah, well, no, no. Like, I felt like the cooldowns were big, but they weren't at all. I don't know why that was one of the reasons why I didn't play. Um, but I, I leveled it up, and I was just like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. I just I got just frustrated by character. how slow it was. It's a slow class, and no I've just come from elements this. Or traits that give you plus 25% move, movement speed, or or utility skills and signets that give you plus 25% uh, mobility. But why? Literally, you have blink. Because they're, not all classes are on equal footing. That's like it's something they're meant to be def- de- deficient in. That's that's a thing, you know. That's not a bad thing. It's just you know these are class distinctions and boundaries. So you know uh. it was slow coming from that from Ellie with perma swiftness and all these mobility skills. There's no comparison. Mm. So I went back to Ellie. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm like I'm. That's the that's the thing that's holding me back from like actually playing Mesmer probably at, at level 80 i'm like walking around being slow all the time might be a factor for me it's great at 80 dude mesmer i hated mesmer leveling up but when i got to it at, at 80 playing mesmer in dungeons playing in it in world versus world you offer so much utility for people i've always played it in pvp long before i ever got to 80 and it's stupidly fun there as well but it's once you get to 80 i can stand it until then but i mean you're enjoying it going up to 80 so yeah, in yeah, theory i'm really am and i, I think like i love my more? character as well I'm in love with mm-hmm. my character. It's really weird. In oh. love. In love. In love. In love. Oh, so where where did I you put this poll, by the way? Baby. On your Twitter. What? Or something. My what? Where did you put this poll? This wasn't my poll. Oh, okay. This is a poll I found on Reddit. And I was like, yep, yeah, talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> on the podcast. So yeah. Well, oh, that was pretty go, interesting. Guys. Yeah, that was interesting. All right. Uh, on to question time. Question time! Mm. Sing it. Yeah. The first, the first question comes from TH God Marcus, who says, what did you guys... T- I don't like this question, because I, I always have this weird thing about it where I want to say it in a way that doesn't make me sound pathetic, which it shouldn't. But okay, <laughs> what did you guys take in university? All right, all right. So I, we were just talking about this. Right, we were. I was, yeah. ta- I was taking game design. I was taking game design. I actually made the game. Um, oh, I really? Made the G- story behind it and everything. Yeah, I was. I was. I was. I was like. I was. Doing Do the- you still have design notes slash copies slash? I anything think I have it somewhere thing. on my hard drive. <gasps> I think. Please, this has to be I a feature think, next. I don't know what happened. I think it might have gotten wiped. Uh, I made. Oh. I made a, a mistake when I was refreshing my computer when I got my new build. I might have been wiped, and I might have wet wept. I don't know if I found a copy of the game at least. Uh, yeah, talk to me about it. What did you make? Um, what was the story? It was a story. Okay. All about how. All about how my life got switched up upside down. All right. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a story of these two brothers. Um, and keep in mind, this was years ago. This was before Two Brothers came out. Yeah. Uh huh. It was a okay. story of these two brothers. It was a um, a sort of fantasy sci-fi setting, right? And okay. there's this one brother was, man. I gotta find the notes. I gotta find the the, the story. You I do. Made. I got. Yeah. I, I can't remember all the, the the the. I like to add little tidbits of character, like um, character progression or a design or whatever Flair. you want to call it yeah. like a, little things that happen when they were a little kid and and stuff like that it, it has to build up to something but long story short two brothers one brother was um you know the brother that always always was the best at everything right okay and was he also the older brother um no he was the younger brother oh he was the younger brother the older brother was more of a, you know, just kind of jealousy type character who was like, it's slightly jealous, not like, you know, acting out or anything like that, but never really wanted to, he, he wanted to, to his father to be proud and his parents to be proud of him, but he just kept messing up. He's just not good as his little brother and it pisses him off. Okay. Um, a conflict happens. I can't remember what exactly it was. A conflict happens in he. Oh, by the way, they're like um, descendants of like 
kings and stuff like that. He he's the, they're like the princes. Oh, they're okay. The princes, yeah. So um, that's why the 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 little brother is being groomed, I guess, for kingship. Why why would the little brother get the throne before the older brother? I I don't know. This is the way it works in my universe. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea. Um, I know that's usually how it is. Is you know within the line or something like that. Uh, I think some some universes don't have that. Where they just sure, pick the, sure. the one that's better. Healthiest. Know? Yeah. I'm we'll have a longer sure. reign. Yeah, what am I saying? It, I'm pretty sure that's the way they do it. Some people do it like whoever's older, but some people. Yeah. It, but he's being groomed because he's better. Um, um, so what happens is he's the, oh, I think it was, he was marked. He was marked by like the blessings or whatever. And um, he was the chosen one. There's this magical item, right, that's being being used when the world is in conflict, right? The okay. sword, right? And did the sword have a name? Yes, it actually had talked, just like transistor. Oh my god, they're stealing from you, dude! Yeah, whatever. Stealing, <laughs> whatever. Oh yeah, but like, what happened? And it, this is a very old spirit. This is the same sword that has been used from years and centuries and centuries and whatever. Like it's a very old sword. Mm-hmm. A conflict happens. He, um, there's more to the story, but the older brother doesn't want to be left behind. He he wants to he wants to have the sword. But he can't because he's he he has too much he has too much wrong with him he he's jealous there's so many emotions in his mind that he does and he's just not he's not grown for it the, the younger brother is the younger brother was always nice to him he was never snobby or anything he was the perfect little brother right mm-hmm. they they take him the little brother is taken to the sacred place for the sword. Right, and he's not really small. Like he's not like ten years old or anything like that. He's older. He's older, of course. He's just the younger between the other. Brother. Right. Okay. Because I was imagining a, a little, little kid. boy. Yeah. 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 He's not. He's not that young. No. Um. You know, the older one is just like, psh, you know, it's traveling. It's like whatever. Um. You know, it's one of those guys off to the side. But anyways, they, the 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 younger brother goes to get the sword. The older brother doesn't want to do that. So in the game, I have I have him walking the path, following clues, because the older brother was really good at tracking. So he tracked where the sacred place was, because no one knows what the sacred place other than the you know the guards, the sacred like round table, mm-hmm. and they go and he goes to find his old his younger brother and get the sword instead of him. Right, so they're enemies almost. Um, no, no, they're not enemies. He just wants to be the one to to save the day, not his younger brother. He's je- okay. he's too jealous of his younger brother. He he wants to be the in the limelight. He wants his father to be proud. He wants he wants to be the hero this time. What happens is he grab he he gets there, and this is quite late by, in the game. Uh, well, this is a very short game. He sneaks by and he grabs the sword, and and the sword is like, "What are you doing?" Blah blah. Trying trying to keep him from doing it, and it, everything stops when he goes to grab the sword, because he is within the same blood, so he can grab the sword, but he's not meant for the sword, uh-huh. right? It, you have to be you have to be in a certain mindset. You have to be the younger brother, pretty much. You know, the, the perfect. Where is the younger brother while this is going on? He's there. And he's like, no, brother, no, don't do it. Because, you know, the younger brother has read the books. He he's understand the concept of the sacred arts of the magic and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And this is a very sci-fi cave that they're in right now. Um, so it's not all fantasy. I like a little sci-fi in my stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Grabs a sword. Long story short, this has gone too long. Grabs a sword. <laughs> no, I'm enwrapped. I'm enwrapped. Grabs a sword um, because... He, the the older brother cannot control the power because he is not in tuned. He ends up killing everyone in the radius. I'm sorry, what? He ends up killing everyone. Brother. King. This is the end of the game. No, this is the beginning of the game. Oh, okay. This right, is how okay. it starts. 
he basically ends up killing everyone, the city, everything. He wipes out the crisis. Does he die? No, he does not die. He's left there knowing that he killed everyone. Um, I, 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 I think it was, it's either an energy surge. I was thinking, I was thinking he lost his mind because he can't control the power. There's different ways I think about it, um, of how he did this, but he ends up destroying the city, everything. And he, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing, but he can't stop it from happening. And then after everything is done, after all the blood is shed, he sits there and he weeps. And now he his the, the sword is chained to him. And basically his his skin is stained red for forever. Okay. Not really bright red of all the blood because it's like um um you know the sins that happen and so now it, what, what what happens is that he's he becomes the chosen one but not of the prophecy i guess you can say um and now he has this power and he has this relationship with the sword um which is a woman by the way sword is oh, always, okay yeah it's, it's a it's a woman voice that's woman good spirit. that's it, but, uh, inclusive I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of like I always think about it like uh, Aragon with the the dragon, that type of that type of voice. Wait, was the dragon in that a, a woman? Yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah. I don't remember everything about it. But what, uh, what the, you just described to me the intro, yeah, in which he kills this, everyone. Where does it go? What's the plot? It kind of reminds me of Zen, uh, Zeno Gear as well. Um, the the plot after that I didn't really think of. Um. What? Becomes... You just thought of a plot where everyone dies no, and that was no, it. No, 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 no. Like not like that. Like I don't know what what happens and what his goal is, but he ends up wandering um the planet and known for the guy who destroyed everything. He's the guy in the, the hood where no one speaks to and oh, is that the wanderer, whatever, blah blah blah. You know, and so he, not his everyone's purpose, dead. Is his purpose? I never really mapped out yet. His purpose okay. in life. Um, I, I think he's trying to figure that out. Um, ah. He he has this sword chained to him, and he doesn't really know how to. I don't know, like deal with himself. The- yeah, like because he has to be. Because if if his younger brother would have gotten a sword, he he wouldn't be chained to the sword, as he is. It's kind of like um. Um, uh, God of War, where he is chained to his blades. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but yeah, I'm not gonna go dive into a story that well, I haven't that's fully the story, fleshed though. out. What, what, yeah. what was the gameplay like? What? How far did you get in making this game? Um, it, it, basically, it was like a platformer. Okay. It was like a 2D platformer, and a bit it like had Dust enemies, and but I, I, I didn't know how to do attacks because what I wanted to, him to have is a like a little blade. And he would um, attack. But usually I had it sneaking. So he basically, during this part of the game, it was more stealth mechanics. Um, it was just a 2D. Coll- and you could get to collect these, you know, these little clues on the way there. And there were harder bits to do. And, yeah, you get a score at the end. But it was it was just a regular game. And I did I dive so much into I made a whole story and everything. And I got an A. Like oh okay yeah it was good it was good so th- well there you go jeez that was long but you 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 what you didn't serve serve you didn't spend you didn't graduate from university did you no no I didn't graduate I didn't get to I had to work which is what we were talking about earlier yeah which was yeah so that's yeah. what happened so yeah. there you go what, what did you do for your university oh my god no see this is why this is why at the start I was like I don't like answering this question I never went to university I did get in but um, it was for English and I really wasn't that excited about the prospects of jobs I could get from taking a degree in English and while I enjoyed the subject material I also didn't want to put myself in massive debt like I saw many of my friends were with no real end to it so uh, instead of going to university I opted to work basically and it's like I was saying earlier you know this idea that you go through life and you don't actually know what your true calling is yeah. I was that I was that guy um I had a uh, I had a psychology teacher though who really um 
really got to me and I really sort of look up to. Um, and he basically, he talked to me about sort of the way his life had gone. I was like, look, I'm so insp- inspirationless. I don't really know what I want to do. I'm just sort of falling into this at uni. And he said, yeah, when he was younger, and the world's a different place now. I don't know how good this advice really is. But he said when he was younger, he was in the same boat. And instead of pursuing higher education straight away, he, t- he spent time traveling the world and finding out who he was and stuff. And then eventually he went into psychology and got his degree in that. And I sort of liked that idea, though I never ended up traveling. I guess I'm still sort of in that place. I would like to go to uni, but um, for something I'm really passionate about. Uh, and right now, I guess that would be maybe in biology or something. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a long road to get back up there. But yeah, so yeah. that's... Uh, I, w- I also thought about going back to school as well. And I think it'd be something. really good, man. The thing is, you, you, we can't do this and school at the same time. I think I maybe could. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I like how you thought about that mid <laughs> mid sentence. Like a bit maybe good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm and pretty then sure failed. you could do it, but it wouldn't be as frequent. I guess you yeah. can say it mm-hmm. would be like normal people where they uploaded a you know a video every week or so, month, month, yeah. <laughs> month. All right. the The next question is from Cinema Coco. Says question for MVWP says, do you think there could be improvements to the way Cond- Condi's work in Guild Wars 2? I feel a lot is lacking compared to Guild Wars 1. For example, how we can currently set fire elementals on fire, poison toxic alliance, and bleed earth elementals. Wouldn't it make the game much more challenging and the gameplay more tactical if enemies had logical immunities and weaknesses? So he this wants way Pokemon. S- this way, some enemies would feel more threatening than others and gave diversity through maps instead of just face rolling every enemy you meet. I agree with the sentiment. I mean, and they so do the so do arena net. You've got dredge cannot be blinded, um, but yeah, it's not as prominent as it should be. You know, like the damage system in this game is they simplified it like mad. Like there are so many different damage types: slashing and blunt and piercing and like ten different elements and stuff you could have before. And this all did have an impact on the like even professions you fought. Did you know in Guild Wars One, like if you were a ranger, you had higher resistance to elemental magic, so you would do better against elementalists, for example. Huh. Like. And as a necro, you would take more damage from holy stuff, I think was the way it worked. And like Mesmer's had chaos damage, which was like sort of like typeless, but not exactly. That stuff was cool. And the devs were like, no, it's all too complicated. We want the game to be more casual than that. Boom. And now it's gone. But I think the Condi system (laughs) does, the Condi system does uh, approach that. You know, it, it does allow us to have that back if they really implemented it throughout the game. Yeah, I think stone elementals, for example, if you apply vulnerability... Usually it would be like blunt stuff. You know big rock golems in RPGs? It's blunt stuff that you use to kill them, right? That's just sort of the way it goes. Don't you think then that in Guild Wars 2, if we're fighting stone elemental stuff like that, it should be like, if you apply a vulnerability to these guys, instead of getting one stack of vulnerability, they get two. Or maybe, instead of it capping out at 25 vulnerability on this guy, you can stack 50 vulnerability because it's that type of enemy. That would be pretty good for dungeons. I could see that uh, a certain type of mob is like, for instance, if you do a raw... What if uh, they're a weak to fire, you know, mm-hmm. and they they can, you, you know, it'd be like just burning the undead, right? So they were, uh, they take like what? A little bit more damage on fire or anything there like is... that. And you could do fire builds where, and it was actually, it was, it was actually meta, you know, it would, it was actually viable to actually run a fiery build. There, there is a boss in Ara that, um, it does interact differently when he has burning on him. His default attack spews out a bunch of ads, tar, that, you know, will pe- will uh, petrify you and do horrible stuff. You get burning on the boss. When he tries to sp- spawn his tar ads, they burn up instantly, and instead his attack becomes an AoE that drops fire fields everywhere, which is much easier to deal with. Like, so, they've got it there in the back end. It works. There are examples of the dredge. They just needed to make it more interesting and flesh it out across all of the, the different enemies out in the game. I, I-, I love the idea. Yeah, I'll see where. Um, So the next question is uh, from Danny Graves, who uh, says, looking at that concept art, this was the concept art we were talking about yesterday uh, that someone found on an ArenaNet concept artist's private webpage. When it was found, it was pulled, so it suggests it's unused art so far. Uh, It really looks like that one area in Brisbane's southwest corner, Aurora's Remains, which, by the way, has what looks like a strange Silvari village there's a shining blade and white mantle ghost in there too so it seems like a natural link to that stuff we might see belinda and it could be a new zone containing that strange circular structure basically next to it what's the question here 
Um, do I, we like the speculation? Is this the the question? I wanted to ask you about. I wanted to ask you about the white mantle. What exactly right, okay. is the the white mantle? I didn't look this up. I wanted to hear from the storyteller. Okay, so do you know who the Masata? Yeah. All right, well, I'll, I'll take it from the top. Last time the Elder Dragons were awake, there were multiple races that tried to rise up and fight them. One of these races were the Massat. Instead of fighting, though, at some point they betrayed the other races. We don't know exactly when this was. But instead of fighting, they chose to hide from the Elder Dragons by slipping into another plane of reality. And from that point on, they had this uncanny ability to become invisible to any who they wanted to see them, unless someone became ascended themselves and could see them. Um, and so the Massar then, over the years after the Elder Dragons went away and many of the other races died out, the Massar continued to live on Tyria, namely around the areas of Kryta, the Tarnished Coast, and the Fire Island Chain. And um, it ha- it so happened that in Guild Wars 1's time, the Char, were- you know the Char conquered Ascalon? Yeah. They also tried to conquer Kryta at the same time, the humans that were living there. But when they marched on Kryta, instead of being obliterated by them, the Massat saved humans that lived there. The Massat revealed themselves again. They said, oh, we've always been here. Don't worry, we'll save you from the Char. And so when that happened, the humans that lived in Kryta said, wow, these Massat saved us. They're these all-powerful beings. They must be our gods. This happened through a man named Saul D'Alessio. And this guy called Saul created this cult called the White Mantle, who worshipped the Massat as their new gods and the the uh, white mantle as an org- organization came into power in Kryta. Now Saul D'Alessio was abducted by the Massat later and disappeared and we never know what happened to him evermore but the white but the white mantle themselves continued to function and they were like oh well our leader's gone whatever we'll just do what we want and they became this corrupt horrible group that were in charge of Kryta. Back then you know how we have Queen Salma? Yeah. Back then, there was no king or queen of Kryta. It was the White Mantle. They ruled the place. That's what Guild Wars 1 was. And through prophecies, we learn about all this, you know, terrible stuff. We find out that the White... Uh, that the Massat, sorry, are basically evil and that the White Mantle have been sacrificing people to appease them. And we team up with a group of people called the Shining Blade to fight them back, uh, to fight back and uh, destroy the, as many Massat as we can and wrest control back out of the White Mantle. And when Guild Wars 1 ended, it ended with a big event called the War in Kryta. And during this war in Kryta, we reinstated the royal family to Kryta, kicked the White Mantle out, and now the White Mantle were just hiding. In the 250 years between the two games, the White Mantle have been hiding in supposedly the Maguma jungle. And the Shining Blade, do you recognize them? The Shining Blade are like big people in Kryta. You know, they're the bodyguards of the Queen. That's where they are now. Um, and so everyone's saying, oh, look, we're going into the Maguma jungle. There's suggestions that maybe the White Mantle are hiding around there. Are the White Mantle coming back? in season two of Living World. And then by that token as well, maybe the Massat are going to come back into the story. So that's who they are. That's uh, They were like the old leaders of Kryta that worshipped these god people. The, in, in a way, sort of did do good. They did save Kryta from the Char, let's be honest. If they didn't do that, Guild Wars 2, it wouldn't be Ascalon is Char area. It would be just Char everywhere, basically, except with the Norn. And that would be pretty interesting, Well, right? there you go. Story time with WP. Bum, bum, bum. There will be minor discrepancies and things that you can clarify slightly differently, but that's the general gist of the story. Uh, the next one is from Husra Gaming. He says, question for Weepy and MV. Oh, I see the way he typed that. Everyone's so creative about the way they give us questions. Have you noticed this? Yeah. They're the most creative people on the planet. Uh, if you could pick a UI feature from Guild Wars 2 and put it into real life. What would it be? For example, having a mini map in real life. What? That's so overpowered. Uh, this want... could also include features in the hero panel and stuff. I want conditions. Okay, I want to be able me... to see my conditions. Let I want to be ask... able to see if I if I'm getting cancer. I'm going to be able to see <laughs> if uh, a, a problem is going to happen. Oh, I'm. I it, it, it doesn't have a. Hungry bar either, does it? Well, I guess I would know when I'm hungry. But anyways, like... A hungry bar. A hungry bar. <laughs> See if you get the testicular torsion condition on you mm-hmm. at any point. Like, oh, got, got to go to the doctors for that one. Condition bar. Awesome. Let me ask you this. What would your trait page in real life look like? What would the trees be and how far in them would you be? Oh, gosh. So one of them would probably be like editing... It will probably be uh zero zero slash zero zero slash zero zero. <laughs> and like the first minor trait would be uh like downloaded Adobe Premiere and it's like ding oh, and then next it would be I like see. 
you pick your master and this is the branch of animation uh, of uh, editing you want to go in into you see well there you go i i Man. put uh plus plus one into funny yeah okay the funny tree what's mm-hmm. the minor trait you get for that uh, i know what mine would be sarcasm um the minor trait would be poop jokes poop jokes okay mm-hmm. yeah i can see that yeah. i can see that <laughs> well there you go well what about you what, what would you pick dude having a mini map would be pretty crazy it would a UI ish. feature from Guild. I'm trying to think of what other you. It... Oh, come on, what do you mean ish? If I had a, if I yeah, had a mini map right a now, yes. No, it's not a mini map that shows like. Well, the thing is, in Guild Wars 2, it doesn't show red dots as enemies. <laughs> Damn. See, I would love a, a mini map so I can see all around my house right now, and I can see people walking up like the alleyway, and like people pulling into the drive. That would be really cool, and you could like zoom that out and zoom it in. What else even is there? Oh, so you want like Google Maps? Basically, you want to but be able update. to watch people walk. Yeah. Um, well, no, you're not. <laughs> not yeah, like that. you said yeah. You said yeah. All right. So there we go, guys. He wants Just... to what? What he does is that he looks out of his side, outside of his window and watches Dinner people runner. walk through the sidewalk. So there are some people running, skateboarding across the road behind a yellow car right now. A guy in a blue top is crossing the road. He's oh, yeah? looking at his phone picture of the 2010s right there now he's outside <laughs> does does the does the idea of being able to um go straight into world versus world like count as a ui feature <laughs> can i press can Whoa, i press so b just, and just, just see go, go to the, all war. the wars <laughs> you can just go to the war like instantly just, spawn just see in. how the war on terror is doing by like a big pie chart in the middle and points per tick that shows <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty bad. Um, what, it, How do you think we... Edward Snowden got all of those state secrets, Matt? He has his own world versus world panel. Right. Oh, of course. Yeah, see? Well, they, there you go. There you go, guys. The uh, the next question. Can't, the, and, the, and the last, the last question. One. Yeah. Ding a ding ding. Ring a ding ding. Ding a ding ding. Ding a ding ding. Ding a ding ding. Ding dong dong dong. I, okay, I, this guy, I'm wondering, did you click on his name? Because he's called Fruit Salad HD, and I really want to see he has YouTube videos of fruit salads. Oh, that would be great. No, I Filmed in high definition. Let when I used to in. work at uh, a supermarket in the bakery and we did like fruit salad stuff, or like flans, we always put like this gel stuff over it so that it shined more and it looked tastier, even though really it was just like a gel. Well, uh, a jello really with fruit salad inside. Sort of, sort of a little bit like that. But it was a we very thin that. sort of paste you could put over. Oh. So it would, it would make all of the Is fruit look like it's glistening. No, it's see-through. Mm, I don't know. It just I've makes everything look that. wet. That's the way it looks. Anyway, uh, Fruit Salad HD says, uh, Dear WP and Matt Visual, I have a visual woodaholic. Oh, I am a visual woodaholic, okay? And probably would not be playing Guild Wars 2 as much as I do if it weren't for you both. That's because these are great to listen to while you're leveling up your Mesmers, for example. Mm-hmm. Or you're buying your Black Lion key. Guarantee someone heard us talking about that and bought a Black Lion key while we were doing it. And I guarantee you they got a Bank Access Express. Absolutely. Going to keep banging on about it. Here's my question. Uh, what was the best and worst dating experience you've had? Give specifics. Characteristics of the girl, boy, location, length, age. What is this? Would you relive the worst date if you could? What would you have changed? And if you have not dated lies, then discuss about a similar experience to a date, like hanging out with a person you liked. Well, should I start? Yeah, I don't think I've really got any stories about no, this. No, you, I've never, you like, better formally have a story. dated. I've never, like, formally dated. Are you serious? That's a lie. I feel like that's what older people do. Anyone I've ever, like, been with has just been someone I've known, either because I've worked with and them or I've been to school date. with them. You never well, is it went a date to the if movies you... or, or get something to yeah, eat. Yeah, all right. If you go to the, the cinema with your girlfriend, does that? I guess maybe that's a date? That is a date, man. But when you're saying what is the worst dating experience you've ever had, that's like you're getting to know someone, you know? Or you basically you axed out a girl, you went on a date with them, and it was the worst experience possible. Hmm. I, I don't, don't really think any... I really have a bad one, but I did have a girl who uh, in high school, um, I had a really bad date with her, and she stalked me for about a month. 
What? And wouldn't stop calling my phone. Okay, so there's this girl called Natalie, right? Okay. Um, I like that name, by the way. So hopefully this isn't oh, going to destroy that for oh. me. She was an Oreo, which is basically um, a black person who has very white... I don't know. Uh, You're not describing my Guild Wars 2 character right now, are you? No, 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 no. <laughs> Okay. She acted very white. And she's not like, oh my God. Oh, look at that. Look at her butt. It is so big. You, yeah, just like, the what, beginning of, um, just, a bit, just like the beginning of that song. If if no one, no. Anyways, um, I like <laughs> big butts and a guy. And, all right, so um, Nat- Natalie was an Oreo. And she liked me, and she looked she looked very uh very good. She was um, a black female, and she had all the junk in the right places. Would right? that be the trunk? Oh yes, yes, lots in the trunk. Okay. And in other places. Um, and uh, she wanted she asked me out, and I was like, and this is back then, when I was my little puffy teddy bear self. I was I was pretty you know, I was I was pretty getting it on in in high school. It's pretty good, okay. um, but I was a nice kid. I was a nice kid in high school. So I took her out. We went to the movies, Aventura Mall in Miami. She was like, I don't know. She wasn't in. All right, I'm not saying I'm in that vet. I'm not intelligent. Like I'm not this intelligent guy. I don't use huge words. I don't do any of that stuff. But. She was a little oh, dumb-ish. A little dumb-ish. What, are you, what if she's listening to this? What, she's not listening to this. I guarantee you 100%. What if she was like, oh, that Matt Visual guy, I remember him. I don't think she'll be in that mindset. It, it, this is that type of girl that they're, they're in. You, she stalked you, you, dude. You see, them, you see them and you're like, man, she lives another in another world. Not in reality. So and I didn't know that because I didn't know her that much. I just knew of her and... In high school, you're not really thinking about personality, are you? So, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> that's high school. But I wasn't really like that. I think after, that was like later on, beginning of the grades when I was still kind of young. Um, so I, we, 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 went, we went out and she was like, she was like, oh, uh, you know, these guys don't re- like, because guys are looking at her. It's like, oh, these guys don't respect you. These guys don't respect it up. They're looking at me, and she's dogging me throughout the whole time. I'm spending money on this girl, and this girl is just straight up like she's like trying, to, like she was trying to make me, like, I don't know. Uh, she's trying to make me jealous of her. I guess she was trying to make me like her more by dogging me, but she's right. going the wrong way about it. And just the whole night of just her just being so and, and the conversations with her was so bad. Give me an example. She was talking about um arguing with her sister about trivial stuff. Like, oh, she stole my hairbrush and like I can't be like, how, old so are you? How, how old are you as this is going she on? She was just she was like, um what, eleventh grade, I think? Eleventh grade, so probably like what, sixteen? 16-ish. Okay. Probably a beginning of 11th grade, somewhere around there. So 16-ish. That sounds like the kind of thing maybe they'd complain about. No, no, no. I hanged around a lot of girls in high school, and they they had a level head. A lot of them had a level head. This girl just was did not have a level head at all. Um, And I didn't know that before going out with her. I probably would have said no. I don't care how much junk in the trunk she got. I ain't about that. Um, I That's a big turn off for me. So... What happened was, um, we went to go see a movie. I can't remember what movie it was, and she was, she was like constantly like talking during the movie, and it drove me nuts. It drove me nuts. What was the movie you were watching? I don't remember, man. I don't remember. All I can remember is her is, talking. <laughs> is her talking, and she was just rude, man. She was just rude. She's just rude. I, 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 that's that's all I can say. It's just really bad experience. That's not even like a funny bad experience. That's just wow. I went out of her and she was horrible. All right. So well, she started stalking me. I mean, literally stalking oh, yeah. me. She, she literally would run to me and I would try to run away. 
Are you sure this was in primary school when you were playing Kiss Chase? <laughs> no, dude. She's like, why are you ignoring me? Blah, blah, blah. Why are you ignoring my calls? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I, I, I'm just not into you. I'm just not. She, she didn't take no for an answer. Oh, she kept chasing me, chasing me out. And eventually she gave up. But and then later on, I heard that she was uh, easy. Is well, that she bad didn't to say sound on the it. Up in, she didn't sound it up until now. I guess I she think really everything likes you're saying is bad. I, I mean, if different. she's listening, she's pretty different than um, than I don't know. Like, I guess I was different than the other guy she dated because I didn't want her, and she she was like, oh. Oh my gosh, he doesn't. That drives want me. her mad. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because she was she was she was a pretty girl. Oh, just trick in the book. Yeah, yeah. And I string so her the, along. So the, the the question here is: Would you relive the worst date if you could? What would you have changed? I'm married, but I would have done some things if I was. <laughs> 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 Let me be honest. All right, I'm gonna be honest to my. M- my bad and completely twisted self and say I probably would have done things differently and I probably would have been that mad that man I was like man please girl you better shut up look we're gonna <laughs> see this movie right now you hear me girl and she would have been like oh oh that's guide me daddy and I'm like yeah that's right whoa that's right <laughs> I love my wife you've replayed <laughs> this a few times eh? no no, no it's, this is my this is my mind going off. So what about you? What's the worst uh, dude, thing you can think of? I have some other really bad dates, but yeah. Most of the, like, I look back on and think is really awkward really wasn't that awkward. I remember, like, with my first kiss, I, like, as we lent in, like, I trod on her foot and put an awful lot of weight on it as well. <laughs> and, like, she was flinching back. What? That was pretty bad. But the worst thing about that is that was a story that came up so many times that it like makes me cringe even mentioning it right now, even though it was like years and years and years ago. How did, and, like, how there did was... you step on her foot? I Hard. don't know, dude. You're not focusing on that when you're like going in for a kiss with someone. Oh, you're. Oh, okay. That makes yeah. sense. So, she was wearing but... slippers or shoes. I, I don't remember. We were outside. We were. How like, do you so not shoes, remember we just... stepping on her little <laughs> beautiful Look, Matt, toes? Matt, it, it all becomes like a big blur after that. <laughs> If maybe if I noticed this, her feet, it wouldn't have like, happened. In oh, the or she <laughs> did she give a nice Samantha scream? Yeah, but like for awkward stories, I was mostly with did one she? person for a long time, and what there wasn't much she awkwardness. She didn't scream. She like I don't know, jumped back. I guess I can't really remember anymore. Did she call you names? You wanker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and called me very insensitive. Slap on the face, and that was the end of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was it. Oh, awesome! Mm-hmm. Awesome. A- anything you else? enjoy that mental image? Yeah. Oh, what what was specifics? Was she uh, was she a woman of color? No, she was. She was like a blonde white girl, short, blue eyes. Ah, uh, I don't remember the color of her eyes anymore. Isn't that sad? No, what, what? Is that your only girlfriend? Then it said. No, 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 no. Well, it's not. It's not. Not meaning like oh, it's but like your only you should remember but... a childhood sweetheart, surely. Oh, oh, oh. Are you still thinking about her from time to time? No, not Do really. You wish you did something different. Mm, definitely not. She uh, she got a bit weird. <laughs> she got older, as many people tend to. So yeah. 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 Once they mm-hmm. grow up, uh, people change, man. That's just how it is. It's not true. Yeah, they you can do. play with my Thomas the Tank forevermore. <laughs> yeah, I've I've met some old high school people. I'm like, wow, man, this guy has changed. Or this. We girl were talking about like reunions a while ago, weren't we? And about whether you'd go to it or not. Was that you? I was talking yeah. to that about. Yeah, I I think we've mentioned it. Uh, probably off podcast, maybe. Yeah, there's a reunion for uh, my high school. I'm gonna go definitely go to it. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. You're going to have to have stories about that. Mate, when is that? When is that? Uh, what, what is it? Like seven years after graduation? Is it seven years after graduation? I don't remember. It's probably well, like yeah, it but in, when, did, when did you graduate, though? Uh, 2004. No, not. 2007. 2007. What I'm saying. Oh, God, so it's a while away. Damn it. Maybe? You don't know. 2007 is. Let me zoom out here. 
Dude, that should be coming up. Look, if that happens and we're still doing audio adventures, mm-hmm. that's your audio adventure. All right. Yeah. All right. And you're telling people you're like an astronaut or something, yeah? Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure dude. Oh, yeah. I've been in space like a couple times. It's like, it's whatever, man. It's mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, yeah. People will believe that. Definitely. If Homer Simpson could do it, so can you. Don't. Oh, that was a bad. Oh, that was, oh. <laughs> that was a bad. Cut that out. Jeez. I'm not good at impressions. <laughs> <laughs> I just know how to voice act. All right. So, so is is that it? Last question? Are, are we? Yeah, are that we... was the last question. That's the uh, conclusion wow. of the podcast. Wow, I thought it was gonna go way longer than that. Really? We we even though we had basically we hit the two hour mark. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And we had basically no topics to recap what we talked about on Guild Wars Two this time. We found the third swinging boy. <laughs> we talked about Chinese world versus world cues. My progress on stat caps. We talked about the highest skill cap profession, the Black Lion Key sk- sale, and you playing Mesmer. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, there you go. That, that's that's blame blame Arena Net for not releasing news. Mm. Blame but Arena soon, for not soon re- TM. Very yeah. soon. Oh yes, yes, yes. Very soon indeed. Right, 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 right. We don't know any specifics, but you know we do. <laughs> we don't. Mm. Might be good, guys. Might be bad. Might be bad. I mean, really bad. I don't know. Well, guess we'll see. Nudge, nudge. Nudge, nudge. I'm sitting here straight faced. I'm not. I'm not giving you any leeway. <laughs> well, guys, thank you guys for watching. Um, I man, we did. Did we think that Visual Wood would just, you know, be this? I I, I want to say it's like you know, mega popular or anything like that, but it's been I did doing see, pretty well. I did see a comment from someone who said, hey, back in like episode five, you said, oh, it's successful. And then I said, uh, maybe this is something we should talk about when we've got 20, 30 episodes out. And now we're 20, 30 episodes out, you know, and it's like, is it successful? I'd say so. It's a fun way to spend a few hours every week for me. Yeah. So. Well, it, we, we're going to do it regardless, I guess. Uh, I mean, unless like one person watches. Well, I mean, the audience don't know it yet, but when we do that big swap to Wildstar suddenly, um, we'll keep doing visual. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, man. I bet people just spit out water or spit out anything that was in their mouth. They spit out spit. Hearing oh, that. my God. We weren't meant to mention it. Whoa. Oh, gosh. Are you are you going to try Wildstars in, in open beta? Apparently, it's like free two-week keys or something out at the moment or something. It's open, yeah. It's 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 open right now for everyone. Um, I could. I might. I wasn't impressed when I played it before when it was like stress test closed betas. Dude, dude, dude. The leveling is boring. It's boring. I I really like the features that's coming out. I really like the dungeons, but man, that leveling is. I heard they did big UI changes and stuff. So I don't know. They did. Um, I, I really want that classic kind of big new open world leveling experience. It's what we talked about last week. I think Black Desert looks really cool and I kind of want to play that. But yeah. um, Oh, did I... I showed you the flying through the yeah. world kind of Black Desert video, yeah? Yep. That thing was insane where it's just one continuous long shot going through their world. Oh my God. So I think maybe that'll be something I look at. Wildstar, I don't know. I know a lot of people are kind of interested. I'm not, frankly. So, yeah. Yeah, I... I'm interested just because it has housing and mounts and a lot of customability, and I do like the combat. I do like the combat. I, I the early levels is hard to tell. I can't really I can't really judge a game by leveling experience when the whole game is end game. So, you know, I, the leveling experience is pretty bad. It's pretty boring. I felt like they just toss stuff in there. It's I don't like it. Um, but yeah, they there you go, there you go. I. I I'm definitely looking forward to all the other MMOs are trying it out. I doubt that I would, uh, you know, go full on, but I always like to play MMOs to end game. That's just kind of what I like doing. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's the podcast, guys. We stretched it out for an extra minute long talking about nonsense. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Absolutely. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and stay or or audio podcast on uh, iTunes, no, no, no. SoundCloud, or uh, oh, and in. Like us, like us. Give uh, us a review. We'll read it out. We'll read it out next time. Mm-hmm. Let me out. 
Oh, read or, or, or maybe not. And stay visual. I'm, I'm disappointed with that because you were doing like a cowboy outro and it was like cool because of Tombstone or whatever. And then you didn't in the and end. And stay visual. No, that's. Gridlock has no pants. Oh. Yeah. <laughs>